Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now ready for Molson Indy number four. And I'd like to ask the Honorable Monty Quinter to say the magic words. Monty? Monsieur, gentlemen, start your engine. Okay, Tom, uh, we're gazing out here. It's that magic order. Gentlemen, start your engines. Uh, this must be the first stage of the day where your heart might stop if, in fact, it doesn't start. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty well started right now, uh, especially after the motor starts. That's your first biggest clue. Is, uh, you you got to make sure that thing fires up before you can get the rest of the day going. But uh, right now, they're just making sure the, uh, the engine's running. They're starting to get temperatures up, uh, looking at the gauges, because this is about... Uh, one of the last few times you're you're you have enough time to, to look at the gauges and uh, so it's part of the job at this point. A guy like Emerson Fittipaldi yesterday everything seemed to be tuned in for him and he was putting in great times. Is he simply just sitting there anxious now? Let's get going. Is that what he's saying? Well, that's one of his big concerns, and uh, he's uh, he's thinking about how he wants to start this race. He's going to dictate how the start is, and uh, you know I'm sure he's peeking over to uh, to try to anticipate or predict what uh, the people around him are going to do at the start of the race. And and most of all, they just want it to be a nice, safe, uh, smooth, clean start, and so they can get on with the business at hand. We were looking at uh, Scott Goodyear there just briefly uh, back on the seventh flow, and here goes Emmo now moving away a little Al, just cutting in front of him there. In fact, as they head into corner one, and uh, the Cart Indy cars move out onto the course, Tom, and uh, a quick review on what happens here. Are you actually scrubbing heat into these tires as you go, just trying to get used to the road surface? Yeah, I think, uh, again, it's just trying to get temperatures up to make sure that, uh, you know, all the systems are working properly. Some of them will be going through the gear shift, uh, going through the gears to make sure the linkage is properly proper, checking the clutch out, making sure the brakes are heated up. Uh, sometimes the brake pads are a little thermostatic, and so you have to build some heat in the brakes. So that first corner at speed, uh, you know the car is going to slow down when you want it to. Somebody needs a push start out there, Tom. Uh, we're trying to pick it's our own John Jones, Canada's John Jones is not getting fired up in fact Tom and I don't know that we can spot uh, obviously the push start they hope will work. I don't think they're trying to push start him up with that crew member sitting in the side pod like that. No. I think they're going to bring him around. He may be out of it in fact. Uh, they're heading to the garage. John Jones unbelievable right off the top John Jones cannot get fired up Eric he may oh. not get away for this Molson Indy run today they're not going to the garage they've taken him to the end of pit road ah. and they're going to push him backwards all the way back he's coming back it's a long way to lug this car they have to come way back around the bend on pit road to get it to their pit area well here, I tell you trying a lot do. of hopes very high for young John Jones but uh, Tom I guess our first disappointment for the Canadian crowd today he will not in fact be ready for the start we watch the field coming around here from the Al Unser Molson car cam and a beautiful view with a little Al there as he follows uh, Emmo around at this point and uh, they look smooth, uh, Tom, and work Derek going Daly. on here. Yeah, Derek Daly with trouble. Car number 10, the Reno Racing Garage Door, Lola Judd. He's having problems getting off the grid. So a couple of cars are not able to get fired here. Disappointment for John Jones. Jim Paulson I was down there on the podium, as yeah. you know. And the look of determination in his eyes, you know he wanted to do well in front of his hometown fans as Fittipaldi brings the field by the start-finish line again. John Jones is hooked up to a little towing vehicle, and they're pulling him back to the pits to be out. to go. He's right here by the bottom of our tower. Well, we could never guess what the problem might have been there, but uh, Johnny just uh, did not get away. See the back-to-back -back sawing action of uh, Bobby Rahal's car and another Molson car cam car down to Chris McClure on pit row. They're towing the John Jones car backward up pit road back to his pit. 
Just as they gave the order to start engines, they detected a fuel leak on board, and he couldn't go with that, so they're going to try and get that turned around if they can and get him out there. Of course, time of the essence right now, I doubt they're going to be able to do it before the green falls, but uh, perhaps they'll be able to run before it's all said and done. I think we'll stand. I don't know about you, John. Uh, we have done this now four <laughs> years in a row, and we have never been able to sit down and do this. I'm okay. going to ask Tom Sneva to keep an eye out on this uh, John Jones pit area. I don't know if you can maybe pick up, give us some insight. Uh, once they start going to work here, Tom, on what might have been the problem or how they might resolve it, or if, in fact, Johnny has a chance of maybe getting into this today. Derek Daly, of course, number 10, uh, with problems as well. So we'll have 26, I guess, start, as opposed to the 28 we'd hoped for today. And uh, this should be dramatic. It's tough to tell. Probably fuel pickup, to, uh, Tom. Are you guessing that way? Well, according to Chris's comments, that looks like it might be the problem. Um, you know, hopefully it'll just take a second or two for him to get it adjusted and uh, and solve the problem so he can get out there. It's got to be frustrating, I, I know, for John, especially here in, uh, for a Canadian race. It's uh, It's got to be disappointing for him at this point. Uh, a lot of folks had some high hopes for him, I think, today, Tom. Of course, you're probably cheering the STP crowd on today, if I recall. <laughs> Young John Andretti. John's had some troubles in qualifying, but uh, got hopes for him in the race. Well, yeah, it's, uh, you know, the only American production motor in the race, and it's a push rod motor with rocker arms and stuff, and uh, so it's a tough battle for him. At Indianapolis, they, they give that, that particular mo motor a little more turbocharging boost, but here in the cart rules and regulations, they, they have to run the same boost, and so it puts them at, a, at a, uh, quite a disadvantage. Could okay. you see them maybe changing that rule sometime along the lines? Well, I sure hope so, because uh, the motor's got a lot of potential, and, and it's very competitive in Indianapolis, and, and they're working on it. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an uphill battle right now. PPG pace cars, the majority of them are off the course. Uh, we have the one PPG truck that is continuing, and some real drama down here with the John Jones spin. Chris McClure, take it away. Well, they, they worked on the, the top of the fuel tank as a fitting, and uh, during practice and qualifying, they put in the fuel there. Apparently, the seal hadn't taken when they uh, covered that up for race purposes. They fixed it. They just took the inertial starter oh. over the wall, and oh, John Jones is away. Yeah. Oh. And the people are happy about that. Listen to the applause for oh. John Jones as he gets out of the pit. That gave me uh, chills. That whoa. crowd, that's excellent. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry, John, I got goosebumps there. The kid's going to get in there after all. Yeah, what a I, round of applause. I was late in arriving, Mr. Steven, but I want to shake your hands. What a pleasure <laughs> it is to work in the tower with you. The first man to break 200 miles an hour in Indianapolis. One of my favorites, and it's a personal pleasure Jim, to Tom. have you up here. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to be here. I had to throw that in. I had to do it. I was waiting all weekend to do that. <laughs> boy. Well, uh, let's try this one more time. Now, is everyone going to get around safely? From the Goodyear blimp, in fact, beautiful view. Oh, beautiful. there it is. That's turn three. Here. That's There's the look at the Lakeshore straightaway. That's sawing back and forth action to heat the tires up, to uh, scrub up those tires and scuff them up and get them nice and sticky as we are moments away from Nick Fanaro's green flag in the 89 edition of the Molson Indy. Can M.O. go all the way? He shattered the record not once, not twice, but three times here this weekend to give us our first sub one-minute lap. Trying to pick up on Johnny Jones. Uh, is it allowed that he can try to regain his race starting position here, Tom? He uh, can, but this track being as tight as it is, it'll be tough for him to work all the way back up to his position. Yep. But he's got the right to do that. Uh, it'll be just a struggle for him to get there before the green flag falls. Okay, good luck to Johnny. At least he's into it. Uh, he's going to give it a shot here today. Going to clear our monitors here, yep. make sure we make are sure ready okay. for the race action, I tell you, my friends. I don't know what it is, Tom. We have just felt that this one is going to be special. I think it's going to be a real run today. Maybe it's what Emo has done in qualifying and so on, but I think it's going to be a knockout show. It should be exciting. There's oh. a lot of good close competition. Pace car is off. And they come. Let's watch it. Emo sets the pace. All the start for the goal. He's Green playing one. Emerson Fittipaldi pops it to them all, in fact, as they get to the green flag start for the Molson Indy in 1989 and watching carefully in corner one. Everyone's getting through, Jim. Everyone through safely into the fastest portion of the course that uh, Lakeshore straight and fit up all the flies away. Uh -huh. No. M.O. on his way. Danny Sullivan right there in behind. Is that Michael Andretti? Yes, it is in and car number six. Out. Yeah, a little L hanging in, and Bobby Rahal. So a nice order, the kind of order you might expect off the start, Tom. Sullivan jumping up a position, though, as we took off here. Yeah, and little Al fell back a little bit. He actually yeah. raised his hand right before the start-finish yeah. line like he wasn't expecting oh, it to go green, and then it did. So I'm sure that surprised him a little bit. Well, did Mario uh, here last year, Jimmy, remember? Did Emo fool him a bit? He was well out in front, I'll tell you, when that green dropped. 
Well, I don't know what Al's trick was raising his hand. It might have got the pe some of the people behind him to slow down. <laughs> but, uh, we same. saw Mario try that here one Yeah, but year. He, he very distinctly and genuinely lost yep, power coming exactly. down the chute here, and he had to pull away, and that created a big boxing start. Here they come. There they are, first time around. Beautiful order, spreading out nicely right off the top for this Molson Indy. And John Jones. Look at Johnny. He's Funny up in the middle down. of the pack. He did some nice work there to get up. Before the city, 16th now, John Jones in car 65. Maybe he took a shortcut or something. He, he moved up a number of positions it there. It looked like he got real close to his uh, official starting he position. He started 16th, and he has started 15th from the grid. Was He's due 16th to start. now, yeah. And is sitting 16th. He's made it all up almost. Look at Danny Sullivan. Danny is hanging right on Emmo. If that was... That arm injury has got to be totally healed now, Tom. Amazing what the medical profession can do nowadays. It is. Uh, it is uh, Nuts and bolts uh, work in the body as well as the race car. <laughs> he took two races off, and that helped, too. He missed Portland and Cleveland to give it a chance to heal up. So it's looking very good. Still well, got the brace on there to hold it, but uh, not hurting him at all. What can I say, gentlemen? A beautiful, clean start to Lovely. the Molson Indy 1989. We couldn't have started this more ideally. Nice launch off the top. And a little advantage here for Andretti and Danny Sullivan. Tom, this is, of course, the first chance for the Indy cars to actually get out here today. They've had no warm-up. So are they using the first couple of laps, uh, maybe the first dozen laps, just to make sure the, the handling setup they had in the garage is going to work on this track today with the heat? Well, it won't take them that long to figure it out. Okay. Uh, you know, it'll just take a couple corners, actually, maybe a lap before they have a pretty good feel of what's going to happen. Here's a look. Uh, on you're riding a little Al. Yep, Al and Sir Jr. through the Horse Palace. This is right down now, taking that left-hand kick out, just sort of jam it. Is going to come around the Queen Elizabeth Center in the fountain turn. Yeah, it looks like he's contemplating an attempt at a pass here, but little Al doesn't want to move too early. Michael uh, Andretti, number six, moving through nice and smooth. Everybody's getting a nice line. I'm really glad that the rain we had didn't wash everything away that we had laid down the groove because you can still see the stripe very, very well. The way that rain came down, I thought we were going to start with the green track today. It obviously looks like we haven't. I, I think it surprised a lot of people it rained that hard last oh, night. Oh, boy, it came down, didn't it? I Not a you, problem. The Better man, last night than today. Yep. The man that the Lyle wants is, in fact, Michael Andretti, and uh, he's right up on his spot. Uh, but, boy, it's a close one right out front with uh, Emerson and Danny Sullivan uh, really fighting it out off the top. Danny Sullivan is sitting just 21 hundredths behind Emmo here, managing to cut a tenth of a second off in that last lap. Yeah, it's as much fun uh, watching the scoring and timing as he as anything else, and Chris McClure has more along pit row. Chris. You, you fellas mentioned that uh, you saw Al Unser Jr. raised his hand. Indeed, he did. He thought they were going to call it off and start under the yellow. And uh, I just talked to Rick Gallus. I said, what was it all about? He said, Emerson... Emerson jumped the stop. They thought they were going to call it off, and uh, that cost him a couple of spots on the racetrack. They're uh -huh. not real happy down here right now. Oh, gosh, I'd say Emerson was a hair ahead, Tom, but hardly jumping the start. Yeah, I've know. seen a lot of starts that were... <laughs> the psychology all... starts already, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Early speed on the psychology. Well, Emmo still hangs onto the controls here. He's leading as they come around again. This will make it lap number four out of a total of 103. He's got about a uh, 24 one hundredths of a He's second He's by lead. him. He's Danny by Sullivan him. is by. Whoa. He has the lead. Danny Sullivan makes the pass. What a move. Who? A move. It's like Going he... into corner one. Coming across the start finish line. Danny tucked inside. Oh. Roberto Guerrero in car number 21. The Alfa Romeo powered march for Alex Morales has come to a stop on the course somewhere. We're not exactly sure where. Car number 21. Roberto and, Guerrero in uh, 21. Everybody is all over M.O. now. I got the feeling M.O.'s backed off a touch here, or the rest have turned the boost up top. Well, Danny seems to be uh, having it all together right now yeah. on full load of fuel. Uh, his car seems to be a little quicker. We'll have to wait and see as they burn the fuel off if that continues to be the case. There's the pass now. And turn number one. Turn number one right up at the Princess Gates, tucked in on the inside. Danny's done that since year one. He yep. loves that little corner. He seems to like to tuck it right around nice and tight by the by the wall, Tom. And that's what Here he needs Here comes there. your new leader, car number one, defending TPG champion Danny Sullivan. Now we watch for young Michael Andretti and Al Lester Jr. to maybe have a oh. shot at uh, M.O. And will they do it in corner one? No, they're fairly well off the pace there. We'll see what happens in the fast part of the course here. The Lakeshore stretch. In fact, it might be a little Al finally having a shot at Michael here. Emerson Fittipaldi, it's Danny Sullivan, Emerson Fittipaldi, Michael Andretti, Al Unser Jr., Bobby Rahal, Teo Fabi, and Mario Andretti. 
Rick Mears, Ari Leyendijk, and Scott Pruitt, your top ten. We have completed five laps, five laps, and we're going to swing down a pit row again, and here's Chris McClure. A couple of quick notes, if I could. Number 10, Derek Daly. They had to leave the grid before the order to start engines. They've got it rolling, and they're going to join the field well back now, of course. Uh, there's indication of some sort of a fire aboard the 28 car and the bodywork. They're going to black flag that one. Oh, Randy Lewis got some problems under the hood there, Tom, so a little fire, they're going to have to bring him in. They had a little problem yesterday in the last practice session, and some of that they might not have solved completely. Well, now that Danny Sullivan is in front, he's literally running away a little bit. Ammo is uh, managing to hang on. He's getting away a little bit from Michael Andretti and Al Unser Jr. But he has stretched that lead to a minute. Well, the roar continues, and the Molson India, our fourth annual, underway at Exhibition Place, and our bridesmaid, the eternal bridesmaid, Danny Sullivan is leading. It's He's gotta be the way. This has gotta be his year, second three years in a row. Now don't He's put tired that of it. He's, on him. Yep. I'm not gonna put any pressure on him. He's got enough of his own. <laughs> Randy Lewis in the pits, Tom Steva. Well, we'll watch Randy. I don't know where that source of the fire, it was a rumor of fire. You can smoke. see the smoke from here. Yeah. Randy Lewis, the uh, Toshiba Oracle team car, Lola Cosworth. Maybe you can spot a time. Uh, Chris yeah, will be there shortly. It's, it's hard to say. And yeah. the way the bodywork is on these cars, by the time you get the bodywork off, and even if you put it right back on, you lose a, a lot of precious time. So keep an eye on Randy Lewis. Yep. One, of the, one of the nice guys of the sport. He's a marketing expert in the offseason. Oh, look at this. Hillsborough, California. Yes. Oh, it's seared. The it's carbon really fibers. Seared, yeah. yeah, the carbon glass carbon fiber cowling has uh, become charred, and that is awful hard to put out. Remember last year, yep. we had a problem up here on pit row, and that created a water in the pit lane problem. Let's hope we don't get the same situation with Randy Lewis. Chris McClure, take it away. Uh, a couple of quick notes. Uh, Derek Daly did get out there. Of course, he's on cold tires because he didn't get any advantage of the early lap parade or pace or anything else. He spun in turn one and continued. The 21 car of Roberto Guerrero is off in a safe place. They call it Station 5. I believe that's the neighborhood of turn number three. And he's not going to continue. And also, just a quick check with pit side people in the Emerson Fittipaldi uh, crew. I said, you know, any problem with the car push or this or that or the other thing that they didn't expect? They said, no, they're not really concerned. And they just believe that Emerson, in this early going, Danny coming off the injury and so on, going to push real hard. Emerson didn't want to fight this early, so he just let it go. Hanging tough here with Michael Andretti on the Diamond Vision and your pit suite monitors. He was our third place finisher last year, and that's where he is right now. He is uh, trailing the leader by two minutes and 42 as Danny Sullivan with a 97 one hundredths of a second lead on Emerson Fittipaldi. So it's Danny Sullivan who early in the race last year, Jim Paulson, you remember, had the lead until he was caught with an improper pit exit penalty that handed things over to Alan Sir Jr. and he took that all the way to the checkers. So let's see if Danny can stay out front. It's exactly the same pattern that he followed last year, Tom. Mario Andretti. Oh, oh Mario oh. Andretti has hit the wall. Mario's into the wall. Oh, boy. Isn't that something now? He the was all over the rear end of Teo Fabi the last time we saw him as they started on the Lake Shore straightaway. I believe that's close to the end of the straightaway. Andretti touching the right-hand wall, and he is out of the race. Oh, boy, the bad luck continues for the Kmart Haviland Lola Chevrolet. Here's there the replay. It is there. Oh, my. Oh. Whoa. Oh, oh, my goodness. No. Andretti trying to pass wow. Teo Fabi oh. on the inside on the straightaway, and he could not get through there with the car sitting on the side. No, that was 21. Is that 21 car, Roberto Guerrero, yeah, that was stopped on the course? Yep. Yeah, that's that, Guerrero's that earliest accident, not by, not by Bots at the 12, the 21 of Guerrero. I guess Mario didn't see the, the local yellow. Well, I didn't see any flags, although that's our monitor yeah, here. Yeah, Guerrero had been sitting there for quite oh, a few laps, yeah. and maybe they took the yellows back. Uh, Mario is in the draft. We did have the service vehicle flag. Now we're going to go for full course yellow. Full course yellow. Oh, what a tough break for Mario Andretti. I didn't see the flags through the fence. That may have just been the uh, glare on the screen, but he had nowhere to go. Andretti well, watch for flags. Let's see, we've we got to get another shot now of what happened for Mario Andretti on the straightaway. He's now getting out of his cars. Tom Sneva, analyze this for us when it comes on. Yeah. All right. Mario's trying to get unhooked. Again, uh, a tribute to the safety features, Tom Sneevy. He hit that car, uh, the car of uh, Roberto Guerrero, very hard, and parts went flying, but he's, he's fine. There's a yeah. look at the overhead view from the Goodyear blimp. That's Gosh, the runoff man. area at the he's end of the out. straightaway. He's out of the car and okay. But again, 
tough luck for Mario. It is, but uh, fortunately he's able to walk away from that because that could have been uh, real, real serious. There's Steve Edwards from the Horton Safety Crew. We've got to get the replay up on here and see exactly what happened because Guerrero's there's Guerrero's car, car sitting uh, against the wall. Left of it against the wall, right. It tore the wheel, I believe, off the front right of Mario's car, either that or the, the rear left wheel of Guerrero's car. He just got boxed in and had nowhere to go. Well, oh, he took again, a line it, there that was strange. Yeah, down, it I was. Uh, he was drafting, yeah. and he had a, probably a good, pretty good draft. He probably had some momentum going, and he, he pulled out and forgot that uh, Guerrero had been sitting Maybe. there for a few laps. I'm a little bit surprised that Cart left uh, Guerrero, Guerrero in that position. That's, that was my initial point, Tom Sneva. The fact that that car was sitting there for the longest time. We're gonna have a look at it here. Tom Sneva calling up on yeah, tail. Well, again, Mario's got a draft going on, on Fabi, and he pulls out to oh. go around, and Guerrero's just right there. I don't see a flag. I don't see flags well, warning. Not well, a there, flag, there might not have been a flag, but the car had been sitting there, there for four or five. Yes, laps, that's true so, too. Uh, you know, that's yep. clearly in view of Andretti as he is. He oh, about he to hit make the tire box. barrier hard too. Oh my. Wow, just ripped up the right side of that car. And huh. uh, like you say, it wasn't a direct hit on Mario, so it, it absorbed well, uh, Tom. Well, he was very fortunate. Yeah. But obviously, when he rips one of the front wheels off, he doesn't have any brakes, and, the, and yeah. the car doesn't stop. It slides to a stop, and Mario's pretty much out of control at that point, so he's going to hit whatever's available at that at that time. Uh, that's a shame. That's Nick Fenoro. Yeah. Sorry, Jim. Nick Fenoro still got the full course yellow flag displayed and the equipment on the course white flag with a red cross on it. but. Uh, just the wrong time to try and make a move for Mario. A lap 11 of 103. Let's run it down. Danny Sullivan is your leader in car number one. Second place, Emerson Fittipaldi in car number 20. The number six, Michael Andretti is third. Alan Sir Jr. in car number two, fourth. And then you've got Bobby Rahal in the 18 Craco car in uh, fifth position. That is lap 11 out of 103. Well, uh, now they'll bunch up a little bit more on uh, Danny Sullivan. I'm wondering. Chris made the comment on Emerson Fittipaldi's psychology on this. Uh, why not drop back to second, uh, feeling that maybe Danny is going to tire. But I wonder, too, maybe Danny's going to fool him. He may be back at full strength, Tom. How much more frustration can this man with 51 career IndyCar wins take? I mean, the last couple of years have been just disastrous for this man. Four-time IndyCar champion. He's even won a championship in Formula One. Tell us about the frustration. Can you, can you, you've, you've had some yourself. Everyone runs through it, but Mario just seems to have had a, a lion's share of it by the bucketful. Well, you've got to deal with it in this sport, uh, you know, because you're not the only element out there. So there's a lot of frustrations in this sport, and uh, Mario's been around long enough, and he's had them, so he learns to deal with it and uh, learns to live with it. And, uh, you know, he'll just have to wait till next weekend to, to try to solve some of those problems. There is Roberto Guerrero's Alfa Romeo powered March. Alex Morales Motorsports. Well, it wasn't in bad shape earlier. <laughs> no, it wasn't, but it certainly, it certainly is pretty well damaged now, isn't well, it? Well, that's what's sad. It, uh, you know, it was just a motor problem. Yeah. You know, he goes to a stop, and, uh, you know, a big question mark in my mind is why Cart left him out there in a position where, you know, he could do damage to other people and also uh, injure himself. It's, it's uh, not a typical situation, and, and yeah. I'm surprised that... You know, that car was still there when Mario showed up. It was that longest straightaway, though, Tom. I guess, as you say, they maybe felt it was obvious to the rest of our competitors that were sitting there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, again. Still, it's, it's early yeah. in the race, and, uh, you know, for it to have to sit there the whole race, yeah. uh, it yeah. was going to be a factor before it was over. Yep, and exactly. It happened pretty early. So, full course yellow. That tightens the field up on Danny Sullivan. There's a look at Mario up close. He we want to chat with uh, the minutes back. I'm sure Chris will do everything he can to contact Mario for thoughts on that. Uh, oh boy. Yeah, it just looked like he drifted aside, thought he might take Teo on the inside, and the bang, there was a car there. The car, the fact the car was there. There, and, uh, there it comes again. Okay. Well, there, uh, there may have been flags further around the corner. I don't see flags waving at the location. Is there not supposed to be a flag oh, yeah. flags, where the wreck is? Around. Is there a flag at the point of the car? Yep. There may have been flags around the bend. We don't know. All right. Now, that's possible that there may have been flags further up around the bend, but it was awfully hard there to, to see a flag at the location of the wreck. There was a flag flag flying. waving. There was. That, All right. Flag there, it yeah. wasn't quite, it wasn't yeah. obvious. And yeah, of course, I mean, Mario just might have plum forgot that the car was there. Too. <laughs> well, and, and again, he's concentrating on Fabi's yeah. car. He's, he's working on the Porsche and uh, he's got them set up and the cars are so close in competition that, uh, you know, he's concentrating heavily and trying to get the draft working. And he tried him on the, on the left side and he wasn't going to be able to do it there. So he went to the right and Fabi or 
Guerrero was there. And imagine the, the contact happened so fast, you don't have any time to react. It must make your knees ache. All of a sudden, you pull out, ah, there's a car there. Well, I know it probably got his uh, attention. He probably uh, <laughs> yeah. thought about a few choice comments. <laughs> well, when I he, would imagine. When he pulled out from behind and saw Guerrero's car there. Interesting sign that Mario just walked by and said, all cars parked will be tagged and towed away. <laughs> I Should have that. been done, right, Mario? There's the Newman Haas racing team and the pit that is uh, so far vacant. Mario Andretti going to be towed around. We're going to skip down to the pit row. And once again, Chris McClure. While we wait for them to turn around the situation on the track, a few moments ago, we had a black flag for Randy Lewis, body fire at the back, and this is what's left wow. of it. Sometimes repair oh. is, is very precise. Yeah. In this case, not so precise. It was called rip off what's burning, <laughs> and then let's continue, which they have indeed done. Well, nice to see Randy Lewis. Guess you can't make a race car out of what's left there. No, not much. Hardly no. worth saving. No spare parts for the chart stuff, no. And it's nice to see Randy Lewis back out there. Car number 28. But Danny Sullivan so far has been the story with Emerson Fittipaldi filing in second. Then you've got Michael Andretti, third, Alan Sir Jr., fourth, Bobby Ray Hall, fifth, Teo Fabi in sixth position, Rick Mears, seventh, Ari Leyendijk, eighth, Scott Pruitt in ninth, and Fabrizio Barbazza in car number 12 running in tenth position. That's Tom. the order one through ten. We've completed 13 of 103 laps. Tom Steva, what does this do to the cars and the motors and the engines? in terms of this many slower laps? Well, the only thing it'll do is let the tires cool down and, and they're a little thermostatic so they don't get quite as much grip when you uh, first accelerate. And we've seen that with a couple of early spins uh, if they don't get the temperature of the tires up. So the drivers just have to be real careful uh, for the first corner or two to make sure they get some heat generated in the tires before they really lean on it. Of course, when they get back, they start the sawing back and forth action to, uh, action rather to get them uh, to warm up. Mario trying to wend his way back to uh, our Two. area, and I know Chris will be watching out for him. He's got the head down. Yeah, That's a sad Disappointing picture. time for the. That is no man. way to run the race course, is it? Walking. No. Qualified uh, seventh. The time is 60.414. Try to get by Teo, and bang. Gone is the Guerrero car as well. So. The legend had a lot of trouble at the 88 Molson Indy. Yes, yep. he did. And he had a big chunk of trouble early this year. And there's nothing he can do about it. All we can do is wait for his comment on what had happened up there, I guess, Tom. He's yeah. the only man who knows, really. He's lucky to be walking back to the pits uh, from the looks of that accident. He's, he's very fortunate. That, mm -hmm. that could have been real serious. Mm -hmm. That leaves one car for the Newman Haas racing team. Of course, Mario's son, Michael Andretti, continues to run the Kmart Haviland Lola Chevrolet. Get a feeling Mario will come back and hang around that pit area, though. And Keep oh, an eye yeah. out on Michael today and maybe kind of cheer him on because Michael running well at this point. Looking good in third. Fans uh, giving him rounds of applause as he walks along. Yep, he deserves that. Salute from the fans here in Toronto. He has a lot of them here. He's probably the annual pre-race favorite. There are probably more Mario Andretti fans in this neck of the woods than any other. Roar of the entire field as they come by our broadcast position here at the Molson Indy. Mess, uh, they're still working on in that uh, fastest part of our course, out of the straightaway, getting the Roberto uh, Guerrero uh, goodies. <laughs> what remains of a, what used to be a rather nice alpha, as I recall. Yeah, not anymore. Uh, we'll hold that out of there. Mario is uh, yeah, shaking his head. Unbelievable. Well, he'll be back in it another day, you can be sure. He hasn't won 51 IndyCar races by giving up. You can be sure of that. Now, you know, uh, the whole incident is obviously being replayed and replayed in his mind here, and uh, just disappointed with what happened. Watching the breeze the is picking up nicely here. We can just turn our uh, attention to the elements for a second. It was been pretty muggy and sticky here, but the, the breeze has picked up rather nicely, and those who have to wear jackets and ties, we thank you. <laughs> Thinking it a, nice, uh, a nicer kind of a day. Out of the race on lap number 12, Mario Andretti from Nazareth, Pennsylvania. What a shame. I think what Mario is saying there in that stance is, uh, I love Chris, but no, I'm not coming back to chat with him about <laughs> what went on there. <laughs> Can you blame the guy, really? I mean, yeah, you're not going to be in the best of moods anyway. Still for, for, full full course yellow. We'll be all right. Full course yellow in the flag with the uh, white and the red cross indicating there are vehicles on the, uh, the racetrack. And of course, is the service vehicles, the maintenance, putting down the speedy dry, collecting up all the oil and the water and things like that, and uh, brushing it away, getting things cleaned up. Now, what can we look for on the restart, uh, Tom? Uh, is this the moment where uh, little Al pops it to them? 
<laughs> I well, don't the, know. <laughs> his, the start of the race wasn't very slick for him. Yeah. So, uh, you know, he's probably trying to think of a way to gain back a couple of those spots that he lost at the beginning. But, uh, you know, that's something that you've you got a lot of good plans, but you just have to wait to see how things stack up when uh, when they come to that last corner before the start finish line. Do you, uh, do you like this moment, Tom? Is it a breather for you when you're in the midst of a heavy race? You like this moment where you get a full course yellow and well, you kind of back off and it, rethink how you might attack? Or? It sort of depends on how you were running before the yellow came up. If you had a nice, comfortable lead and the car was working good, uh, then you don't especially enjoy this kind of situation because it gives the other guys a chance to close the gap. Uh, but the same token, if the car was quite a ways off, it, it, the full course yellow gives a chance for some of the uh, for some of the teams to come in and make adjustments. Now, I yep. haven't seen anybody do that. Nobody so came in yet. so yeah. everybody's pretty happy with where they're at right now as far as the handling of the car is concerned. Would have found maybe one pit stop, Eric, but uh, not a thing. Uh, Pancho Carter, I see. Pancho uh, Carter, number 29, the Hardy's leader card, Lola. How did he get Cosworth? caught up in this? He's yeah. uh, jammed he's, in there somewhere. It looks yeah. like he's already parked. Just pulled it aside. At the yeah. end of the Lakeshore straightaway, yeah. Okay, there's Guerrero's car, and uh, we're just kind of replaying some of this on the Molson Indy Network. Uh, we note. Uh, is, that, is that Guerrero getting out of the car? Was Guerrero in the car when that happened? I don't believe so. It was, as you say, four yeah. laps since he was stopped out there, yeah. so I would imagine he was out of the car. It looked to be in front of one of those uh, observer stations there where they have the rectangle cut out of the fencing, so I think he was able to get out of the car quickly. I was just intrigued by Pancho Carter's, the, the Hardee's car, the wing in there, right in front of uh, Mario. Whether yeah. or not he had just uh, been pulled off into one of the uh, offshoot areas before that uh, shunt happened, I don't know. But uh, Or during the yellow, maybe he's just pulled aside. Uh, quite possibly. Yeah, we don't really have the story on that. Chris will get an update, of course, uh, out along pit row. But uh, Pancho Carter. Gosh, he's been around as long as you have, Tom. 16-year veteran. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. We, in fact, we were rookies in Indianapolis the same year, were 1974. Yeah. They are clearing the area now down in the Lakeshore straightaway. There goes one of the Horton trucks, and the car is out of the way. I would think this would be coming up the last lap on yellow. Might be. We could be set for a restart at the Molson Indy. All right. Horton crew uh, coming in. Lap 17 of 103 have taken place. Jeff, and when here's... When the green flag goes down again, Danny Sullivan will be your leader. Car number one, the defending champion from last year. Emerson Fittipaldi, car 20, sits second. Michael Andretti in car number six is in third position. In fourth position, number two, last year's Molson Indy winner, Alan Sir Jr. And car 18, Bobby Rahal starts fifth when the green flag comes down again. At the moment, still double yellows and uh, equipment on the track flags are showing here at the start finish line. There's that back to back motion we mentioned trying to get those tires scrubbed up heated up again. Saw that wheel back and forth to get those tires scrubbed and, and heated up again going back and forth. What a comical looking maneuver and everybody does it. It's kind of like a carnival ride. Of course Mario Andretti is thing. on pit row. Mario's Here comes back. the vehicle now. Oh yeah. The Newman Haas little go-kart is bringing Mario. How about a back. hand? Come on, for Mario Andretti as he makes his way down pit row. A hand for Mario. He's coming back along uh, the pit area. Probably the number one driver, the best overall driver this sport has ever produced. Maybe the applause will help. Here's Mario now in front of the VIP uh, area. Come on, folks. Moving down in turn number 11, right along pit row. How about it, ladies and gentlemen? A tough ride for Mario. Championships in Formula One, Indy cars. Yeah, but the key is he's back and he's safe, I think, Tom. Uh, that's the main point. That's number one, and, and he's probably feeling pretty fortunate at this point because when he popped out from behind Teo, uh, he had his eyes full right at that good. point. Pretty good. Nice. I tell you, a nice welcome. Thank you, folks. Nice return from Mario. Should be perhaps We're going to go one more lap. lap under yellow yep. for sure. Horton crews are still on the course after dropping off and clearing up the lecture straight away the Horton teams must get back to their positions and they in turn wind up doing just about a whole lap to do that there's so the we're still showing full yellow on the racetrack there's the view from our Goodyear blimp a spectacular panoramic view as the cars move around 96 in pit row in fact uh, Guido Daco Guido has uh, been playing around with cars all weekend he finally <laughs> got this one running in fact Tom and uh, there we go he has uh, He's been the one exception, I guess, Tom. He is the one who chose to uh, make a pit stop. Whether it'll be to his advantage, I don't know. 
Well, it doesn't really hurt somebody that's running right at the back of the pack to to make that stop, and, and it might work. He can fill up with fuel. He might catch another yellow at the right time, and it might it work. Might work for him. It really yeah. can't hurt him much, and yep. all it can do is probably help him. Exactly. So Guido uh, maybe not making a bad move there by grabbing the pit stop on that yellow, uh, Eric. No, nope, probably not a bad idea at all. It fixes something that uh, obviously was not running right. Instead of uh, having to come in under the green, probably a good idea to, to get in there while we're under a full course yellow. Danny Sullivan, Emerson Fittipaldi, Michael Andretti, your top three when we're ready for Nick Fanaro's green flag, but he's still displaying the full course yellow, keeping things on a much slower pace. Ludwig Heimrath Jr. on the uh, yellow condition will take you around the Better Living Center. You watch it there, head wobbling just a little bit around the fountain turn. As the rest of the field moves around behind the PPG pace car, pace truck actually in this case. Lights are still on in the pace vehicle. Anyone know who's driving that? We had Alan Sir Sr. drive it the first year here. Anybody know? I think it's Steve Chassis is driving oh, good. the pace car this year. Steve Chassis, very good. I'm just trying to pick up on where our Canadians are sitting. You're watching the uh, field flash by you, of course, uh, in nice proper order in anticipation of a restart. Uh, our top Canadian, in fact, is sitting 11th overall in the form of Scott Goodyear for the McKenzie Financial crowd. Uh, John Jones, despite the hesitation on the start, is in fact 14th overall, Eric. Uh, the Labatt vehicle and uh, Ludwig Heimrath Jr. a little further back in our standings, but still very much in the battle. Yeah, it's good to see John Jones carrying in there. I was, I got very, very frightened when uh, the car decided to act up in what looked to be a fuel pickup problem, but they, they got it fired up. And in the short time he got back out there, and Tom, you mentioned the fact that because the track is a little bit narrow, it's kind of hard to maneuver and get back to your position. We thought he was going to have to go tail, but he was able to maneuver himself up a couple of rungs and get up there and currently running, as we mentioned, in the uh, 14th position from the top. They're all trying to catch, of course, uh, Danny Sullivan in car number one, the Miller Highlight Penske PC-18 Chevrolet. Defending points champion. I believe we are going to get to go racing the next time they cross the finish line. They I'm have taken away. Just keeping an eye on Scotty Goodyear here. The on the track flag. The yellow is still being displayed, however. Scotty's Just one single flag is showing. Mm -hmm. The double flags that were up along pit row are away. I'll tell you, Goodyear's in the position he wants to be in. Sitting 11th is good this early in the run. and. Yep. Uh, He's in the midst of this pack, uh, bobbing back and forth as uh, deliberately as any one of them as he comes around corner three there. So if he's your great Canadian hope, folks, sitting there at 11th, Scotty looks good. See what he can gain, perhaps, on this restart, too. And it's uh, very possible he has to give uh, Fabrizio Barbazza a bit of a shot. That's the man he wants to reel in uh, this time around. Mm -hmm. Keep an eye on the pace vehicle to see if the lights have come out. Now the pace vehicle's going. Around no, again. another lap. Another lap at least. Down to the yellow. All we can do is uh, sit the two people. and wait. And another pit stop. In fact, uh, diving in is Fabrizio Babetza. So already, Scotty Goodyear's gained a spot. Yep. Both people in the pace vehicle, as they went by that time, were have their hands out the window with one single digit up in the air. Now, would that mean one more lap under yellow if, if the pace car showing that, Tom? Yeah, that's exactly what that means. They try to give the cars or the drivers a, a one-lap warning when it's going to go green. Sometimes I'm not sure we should do that because it stretches the yellows out quite uh, for quite a while. I think the drivers should be able to adapt without that kind of warning. But, uh, you know, sometimes they just don't get it cleaned up quite as quick as you'd expect. By the way, very fast pit stop for Fabrizio. Uh, he just paused there. I think maybe it was a tea break. Bang, he was right back into it. <laughs> that wouldn't have been enough time to have it steep, the little bag. <laughs> Couldn't even have the donut. Already. They had the bag ready just prior to his arrival. He was gonna <laughs> we might uh, see if Chris can check down in the pits for us to see uh, when and if they can maybe go uh, the rest of the race with uh, just one more stop Good at idea. this point with the fuel situation. We'll have to see if Chris can check on that for us. Good point, and I know Chris will. He'll be on top of that one for us uh, before long. Certainly, we want to try to corner Mario and get the uh, story on the uh, incident as he tried to bob around Teo Fabi and Kabam into. Uh... Andretti is a busy man. There's a large crowd. Oh, there's going to be a mob down there. Uh... Around the Newman Haas racing team pit of Mario Andretti right now. We hate to be picky, but we do feel the Molson Indy Network gets preference. <laughs> if you could move aside, folks. <laughs> get, get Chris in there. Oh, he'll get in there. He's, uh, uh, yeah. he's used to this uh, football blocking thing to get a in. A warrior, isn't he? A warrior. <laughs> 
There we are, the whole mob around Mario. I'll try to get the story. We'll see Chris Poke in there. The pace car is off All the track. Right. We're ready. Right. Here comes Danny Sullivan. Oh, way ahead. No. They give him a wave yellow, Tom. No, they're not going to let Danny run away with this. The yellow stays out. That's good. I mean, okay, you know, Danny. too often here, uh, guys have been jumping the starts, and uh, I think it's it's good that they finally threw the yellow, and uh, we're here to put on a show, and somebody should be able to gain that kind of advantage. John Andretti oh. in car number nine, the uh, the car that you're associated with on some of the uh, the other ovals and things, Tom Sneva. Yeah, it's the uh, the STP Buick. Uh, uh, the again, V6, right? Pretty much a, an R&D year for this uh, for the team, and uh, I'm not sure what happened. Maybe we'll be able to get to see what exactly did happen on the start. But again, cold tires uh, could have been a factor. Isn't that a shame? Uh, well, that's, that's it. Chris, Chris McClure, Chris. take it away. We are in Mario Andretti's pit. And Mario has been talking with a lot of members of the media and several television outfits. The same story, if you would, sir. Oh, the incident itself, uh, what exactly transpired as you came up on tail? Well, I thought there was, uh, I thought the car, there was uh, the, the, the Guerrero's car that was stopped there. I thought that perhaps pulled it ahead or they moved it away because uh, I didn't see a stationary yellow any longer. And uh, my view was blocked by Teo because I was following him very close down the straightaway. So when Teo moved over, uh, there, was a, there was a car that was uh, sort of pretty much between Teo's and mine, I think. And I had no way of avoiding the car. It was a real big surprise that the car was still there. We were told on this side, having not seen the exact position of the car, that it, had been, it was in a safe place and would be left. And Obviously, you don't agree with that part of it. Well, I don't agree uh, the car being a safe place because all the action for that uh, hairpin goes on right at that point. That's the breaking point. That's where all the passing goes on. You cannot tell me that was a safe spot. You're fine. You're all right. I'm fine, thank you. Okay, Mario Andretti out of the race far too early. Untoward incident, difficult call out there on the race course, and he got caught up in the fray. Well, the local yellow that we discussed, gentlemen, right off the bat when I did not think I saw yellow is exactly the same situation. It's showing a large patch of oil on the track. As John Andretti is going to get the speedy dry out there. That is why we're still yellow, obviously. But getting back to that flag, we did not see, I didn't see a local yellow. And uh, we we're kind of wondering whether the flag was there or not. But uh, Mario didn't see it either. Well, and I have to agree with Mario. That uh, I can't agree with whoever decided to leave that car there. That mm -hmm. that is not a safe spot. Uh, one of the few places to pass on this racetrack is the end of the long straightaway, and to do that, you have to to move out and, and drive around guys in, in that area. And so uh, I'm surprised the car was left there. You need the room, that's for sure. Yellow remains, and we've got to get the oil off. Uh, Hart had to stop a little bit when John fell out of that, of course. Uh, down. That's too bad. Uh, yeah, he's pretty been struggling all weekend. Well, it's, it's a tough battle. Uh, you know, it's the only American production motor out there, uh, push rods and rocker arms, and it's it's racing against the overhead cam uh, racing motors. And uh, so we got a real restriction on RPM. We have to give up three or 4,000 RPM. And it, at Indy, you can make it up with a little more boost that they give you. Here, they don't give you that boost. And so it, it's, a, it's a real tough development program. Let me talk about uh, the fact that uh, this motor seems to be in a lot of development. Can you see this thing? We, I'm watching it now in, uh, in ASA stock cars. The, the V6 is almost uh, standard equipment now, and even Ford has come out with the V6 engine. Can you see this becoming more and more popular and the way to go? Well, I do. It's, it's, it's less expensive. It's about sure. half the cost of some of these other motors, and if the rules are written properly, a little adjustment, uh, it can be a very competitive, strong motor that uh, people can relate to. It's tough to relate to the Judds and the Ilmores and things like that, but uh, they, they drive Buicks and uh, yeah. Fords and Chevrolets and stuff. One more car back out. Pace car has uh, picked up on the field one more time, though, too, Tom. And uh, Aaron Lindeck grabs a pit stop. The Pavimi Neal, Lola, with that short stroke DFS experimental Cosworth engine for Dick Simon Racing. Ari Lyondike into the pit, something uh, in need of adjustment there. Cowling is coming off the motor, so they've got some problems in the engine room with Ari Lyondike. Well, that's a motor that's closing the gap on that Chevrolet program. True it is. But, yep. uh, you know, it, it costs a lot of money to do that development. And, uh, you know, they're still not there with it. And I think a lot of people think it's going to take a re complete redesign with the Cosworth to try to, to close up on that gap with that Chevrolet, as they call it, Ilmore racing yeah. motor. Yeah. Before we end our engine story here, we know Formula One has gone back to the normally aspirated engines and taken the turbos away. Do you think that could happen here in Indy cars? The people I talk to say, no, we're going to stay with the turbos. What's your opinion of it as you look at Ari Leyendijk on our... Well, I don't history? see a big problem with the turbos uh, as such. They do cause a, a lot of 
different problems a lot of heat they're heavy uh, and I'm not sure they add anything to the racing I think with an aspirated motor uh, there'd be more competition more people to get interested in because the cost would be a little bit less and, and I think the end result would be more competition closer racing and more excitement for the fans some things to look forward to in the future Jim Paulson the way of uh, power plants in these Indy cars Exactly. Landeck, still sitting in the pits, and the last time the pace car went by here, we're showing one lap to go. Chris McClure is in the pits. Very quickly on the John Andretti situation, I'm with car owner Vince Granatelli. Vince, uh, not only a spin, but more than that. No, uh, we're, we're very disappointed right now. We felt that uh, uh, the STP Tuna Masters Buick was going to be a, a competitive car today. We uh, had a little clutch problem early in the race, and then, of course, uh, the spin just now. Uh, uh, didn't help us at all, but we're difficult. We're sorry that uh, couldn't do a. Coming down to green. And we're back to green we're here at the Molson. Great blast of power, and we're back to the race tempo at the Molson Indy, our fourth annual. Danny Sullivan still leading. And he's safe getting down through corner one. They're into the fast part of the course one more time, and he has got Emerson Fittipaldi all over him out here. Oh, boy. Danny's got company. A lot of action behind them, I'll tell you. Rick Mears trying to make a move. Michael Andretti not going to surrender a thing. Neither will Bobby Rahal, Teo Fabi, all the gang. Uh, and it's Danny Sullivan. Lion Dyke is back out in car number seven. So Ari back into the battle, and uh, it's a battle currently led by... Danny Sullivan. I don't see any dramatic changes in our lineup there on that restart, so nothing really happened. I guess everyone is pretty well holding position. Coming around for the first time since the restart, there's Danny Sullivan. Emerson Fittipaldi, a minute 10 behind him. Little Al really hanging on to Michael, rather beautiful out here. I, that, Off to uh, Chris McClure, I guess, along pit row. Let's get an update on Ari Leyendijk from Chris. Well, they haven't missed. They're trying to diagnose it. Of course, as Tom Schlieber can explain it better than I, certainly, that could be a myriad of problems. But that's what brought him in. A quick adjustment. They're back out to try it again and try and continue in competition. Go back and correct something there. I said Danny Sullivan in the lag between him and second place runner Emerson Fittipaldi is 1.39 seconds. Harry back in very quickly here. Yes, indeed. Already so back in pit row. 1.39 second lead for Danny Sullivan on the second place runner Emerson Fittipaldi. Just want to make that slight correction. Ari back in. Five top ten finishes for Ari Leyendijk out of Ross Millen Holland. He ran into a foot injury last year and some mechanical problems. Probably could have had a few more top five finishes. Watching Michael Andretti in car number six. The lone Newman Haas entry, the Kmart Haviland Lola Chevrolet. Scott. And Alan Sir Jr. The team Valvoline Lola Chevrolet right Little on his Al heels. He's move. gonna make the pass. Oh. Little Al with the fumes coming off the turbo really kicked it in. Got it. He and got, got it. the pass on Michael Andretti. A nice move there by last year's winner, Al Unser Jr. out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Now little Al can take off after Emerson and Danny, and uh, let's see if uh, it could become a trio perhaps up front here. Could happen within moments. It Bobby was Ray Hall's now trying to get all over the rear end of Michael Andretti. Here's that pass. He just had a little draft on him and got it pulling a little bit. Uh, Michael tried to use as much of the racetrack as he could, but uh, little Al might have surprised him a little bit right there. He looked kind of loose in the back end there, too. Is that just turbulence from the car in front for Michael's car? Turbulence, and he had to uh, saw on the wheel pretty good sure. to make that little move at the last moment to get as much of the draft as he could and then jump out at the last minute. And uh, he was under heavy braking at the time, so it's uh, he had his hands full. That back end was flopping around pretty good there. Yeah, it was. Well, it's... Still very much a trio. Al Unser Jr. still has Michael Andretti hanging onto his butt, and uh, Bobby Rahal. Part of that, we go to Chris McClure on pit row. I believe while we were chasing Mario Andretti down and getting that story, I heard Tom Sneva pose a question about fuel mileage and pit stops. That may be an indicator. We did not know going into it that Emerson Fittipaldi and his crew had planned to pit stop at lap 33, all things being equal and green. But now we've had a long yellow, so their window moves up. 
37 to 40 approximately in terms of when they might anticipate their first pit stop. Another long, it's still a two stop race, let's put it that way. Another long yellow of some sort and that situation then could change dramatically. But still at the moment, it's a two stop race with maybe a short leg at the end in terms of the last load of fuel. 27 laps are down, Chris. They're carving away at number 28 right now, so it won't be long uh, before that uh, pit stop situation, Eric. No, it won't be, but Danny Sullivan still in control with a 1.38 second lead on the second place runner, car number 20, Emerson Fittipaldi. And you're with the cars as they snake down the lake shore straight away into that tight right hand hairpin at turn number three. Fabrizio Barbazza right up in the tail of Ludwig Heimrath Jr. It's one of the interesting little duos that are fighting out here that you want to keep an eye on. And of course, uh, Scott Goodyear, who sits uh, ninth overall. Nice positioning for Scotty Goodyear at this point on Scotty Pruitt's tail. He's got to knock Pruitt off to climb a notch here. If he was going to finish anywhere in the top 10, that'd be good. He's the first Canadian to finish a Molson Indy, finished eighth in 87 behind Fittipaldi. Yep. So it's not unusual for Scott Goodyear to finish within the top 10, and right now he's looking okay, although it is still very, very early. Oh, yeah. A lot of time to go, as you know, Tom, and uh, there will be many developments before this day is over. There sure will be. I see Lion Dykes back on the racetrack, but the motor still doesn't sound very crisp, so I don't think we'll see him out there much longer. So look at Danny Sullivan. Fittipaldi right there, and Lion Dyke slowing down. Yep. Ari Lion Dyke's going to escape to the escape area. Who Allenser Jr. had to be very careful there. He almost got caught by Lion Dyke, who bailed out and went down the escape road in turn number three. So the problems continue with the Dutch boy Provimiveel entry for Dick Simon Racing. A tough break there for Ari Lion Dyke. If indeed he has come to a complete stop, and it looked like he was going to. I'm I don't not think sure. so. I don't think he went down the escape route. He's, he's trying to limp around and get back to the pits, is what it appears like. Okay, I thought maybe he's going to tuck down that road. He looked like he was going pretty straight. It looked like I think he was just trying to move over and, and, and take the wide route around three to let the other guys go inside. Well, his problems continue. At least we can. Uh, yeah. He'll be in down pit row here in a moment, I would think. Okay. We'll watch for him. So Ari, a little bit of a traveling chicane, I guess, uh, for the moment <laughs> out there on the track. They'll have to wind their way around him. It's no problem for Danny. Or Fittipaldi is closing, albeit very slowly. Yep. It was a 1.39 uh, second gap between himself and Sullivan. It's now 1.08. Lion Dyke is coming in. Let's go to Chris McClure as Lion Dyke comes in. Chris, take it. Well, as Tom Sneva suggested a moment ago when he heard Lion Dyke leave the pits, it was real soft on the engine compartment. And I just did speak with the uh, team owner, Dick Simon. They don't know what's the problem. They're trying to change everything and keep him at least in competition. But right now, they're having a devil of a time with him. Well, we're watching that uh, consultation, in fact, uh, continuing in the uh, Lion Dyke pit. And uh, I don't know, they're reaching down inside the car now. Uh, Ari will not be back quickly. Uh, they've got some work to do there. The Dick Simon crew. And look at this, Fittipaldi. Yes, Jeff Howard. What's happening there with him and Danny Sullivan? Fittipaldi is getting closer still. Danny Sullivan has less than a second on Emerson Fittipaldi. Nine tenths, in fact, is the lead. Carving away is Emmo. He's moving up and he's reeling in the number one of Danny Sullivan. Right in behind, well within hand grenade range, that's for sure. 30 laps down, they're working on number 31. Maybe prior to the pit stop, uh, Emma wants to be in front. It might be a psychology. And you've got our number one and two car there seconds ago overhead with the Goodyear blimp. Spectacular shots of Danny Sullivan in the number one. And a second place charger and on the move, the number 20 of Sao Paulo, Brazil's Emerson Fittipaldi. There they are. Very good. Cheering on the Canadian crowd, Scott Goodyear in 91. He's running ninth overall. You're cheering on Johnny Jones in 65. He's sitting 12th in this race. Ludwig Heimrath Jr., 71, is sitting 15th overall. The Canadians are not bad as we go back to Ari. Yes, they're putting the cowling back on the engine. That short stroke DFS uh, Cosworth, there's only two in the field. Leyendijk has one. Bobby Rahal in the Craco Lola has the other. And so far, it hasn't been running very well, at least not today, for Ari Leyendijk. It's car number seven. We're going to get him back out there and see if he can't continue on. Look at Alan Sir Jr. in car number two. Little Al's also chipping away at, uh, at both uh, Emmo and Sullivan. So either Sullivan's slowing down a little bit, uh, maybe as the fuel burns off, he's a little more abrasive on the tires and uh, 
He's slowing down a little bit because Little Al's all catching uh, the two front runners at this point. And Apaldi continuing to close. It's now a 88 one hundredths of a second advantage that Danny Sullivan enjoys. If you can call a lead that slim enjoyable on Emerson Fittipaldi. We have completed 31 laps, by the way, 31 out of a total of 103. Tom, you're dead on. The, the gap between Sullivan and Fittipaldi is now 76 hundredths, yep. and Little Al, he was 2.3 seconds behind Sullivan, is now a second and a half. Look at these warriors up near the front. Just chopping away at each other here. Danny Sullivan leading at number one. Emerson Fittipaldi in car 22nd. Al Enster Jr. in car number two. Running in third, you could throw a blanket over all three of them. They're that close together. And we're starting to lap traffic already back there. Oh boy, we're into back markers now. All three of your leaders are safely by without having to take a breath or a moment or let up, I don't think. Well, Little Al very much a factor now. 151 off the leader. Very much up on Emerson Fittipaldi. The three all running very tight uh, throughout this entire circuit as Scott Brayton wanders in. Yep. Car number 22, Scott Brayton from Coldwater, Michigan. He finished 14th in the Molson Indian last year. Let's go down to Chris McClure. Probably Brayton, Scott Brayton has arrived in the pits. Also, we see laying out for a pit stop the number eight car crew, that of tail five. He makes a pass to turn on Brayton. He oh, Brayton. stalls as he pulls away. He got a pretty up, and now the engine is not running, and the crew is pushing him up pit road. Oh, well, but I don't know if they're going to be able to bump start it. Meantime, right in front of that. No, nope, as they back. Break back, we have the Provimi car of uh, Ari Leindijk. They tried a second ago to start it. It would not respond. He's still in the cockpit. They're not out of the race, but they don't have an engine working. Oh wow. boy. Brayton is back to the pit now, and they will reemploy the starter motor in the back. And they're rolling, rolling, rolling. It's fired. It's just at this time successfully as he in into second gear and on to, down the pit to exit. He makes it out, Derek. <laughs> just, finishing, there. just finishing the thought. Scott Brayton likes to run here. He runs fairly strong. He was 14th in last year's Molson Indy. He runs a concrete manufacturing firm back in Coldwater. He's a pretty good private businessman. Went out on the wheel of the Amway Lola Cosworth. The leaders are still tight. The tightness between Danny Sullivan, Al Unser Jr. Are we getting into uh, Mario Andretti? Regular pit stop time anywhere near 34 Look laps. At, you oh, would think sorry, so. gang. <laughs> I got excited about Emmo's move there. I thought he was about to grab Danny. It looked like little Al was about to pass Emerson. Yeah, the trio of them are all. 34 laps, you can look for a pit stop almost at any time now, Jim. Bernard Jourdain's crew has been showing him signs, pit two and then pit one. I think he's coming in this time. Here comes Kevin Kogan's car. Car number 11 is in for a pit stop. Kevin Kogan rolls into pit row. Kogan's back Car in. number 11. Our uh, lunch man comes in here we one got more a timer time. timer on this one. Here's Kevin Kogan. He crashed here last year at the Molson Indian, fractured an arm, and he had that horrible crash at Indianapolis this year. They look for looking at the pit stop, the time going on here. If you're going over 14 seconds here in Toronto, you're too long in the pits, and he's already too long. Kevin Kogan, 16. And the machinist 7. crew. Yep, 16.7. The machinist crew there for Kevin Kogan out of Paradise Valley, Arizona. Kind of slow. Last year we had Alan Sir Jr.'s crew and Michael Andretti's crew getting them out in between 12 and 14 seconds. Al Unser Jr. is in second place. No, wow. Uh, I don't think so. I think somebody got mad in timing at Emerson. They've dropped him down here to about 10th. <laughs> well, there's that something is not true. Something's that gone wrong here. True. There's Emerson. little Al. There's Emerson still behind Danny. That, no. Yeah, that's an error. Of Take his. that back. I'm reading the timing <laughs> screen here and somebody in the timing. I'm going to throw this department. TV over the railing if they keep doing that. No, let's remember, no Emmo's right in there behind Danny, and uh, in fact, he may get in front. Uh, they have got a real dice happening. Four cars now fighting it out with Danny, Emmo, Al, and Michael. Well, they got there. They're going to put Emerson back. He's he's gaining like crazy on the screen. Here we go. He's back now where he's supposed to be. Straighten up. Now we go. Okay. There's Danny Sullivan. Pretty well alone now. The trio got fighting so much, he managed to pull away from it all. They've been going through a lot of back markers and a lot of traffic has been slowing them down. 
You know Tom Sneva, the Roger Penske needs Danny Sullivan in that stable. Rick Mears being the master of ovals. They need the road course experience of Danny Sullivan. We know there's been rumors that he may not be with the team next year, but they've got him back and the arm is okay. He missed two races. Maybe it's not going to be able to uh, duplicate the points championship, but Roger needs Danny back in, and they would love a win here in Toronto to get him back into it, wouldn't they? Well, obviously, it looks like Danny's arm is healed. He's uh, making a great comeback after missing a few races earlier in the season. Exactly. He certainly looks good sitting here today so far. We are in lap 36. All right, lap 37 of 103, and here we go. It's Danny Sullivan, your leader in car number one. Second place, the number 20 of Emerson Fittipaldi. Car number two, third place, that's Alan Jr., of course. The fourth place winner, the number six of Michael and Freddy in fifth location, number 18, Bobby Rahal. There, there we go, lap 37. And it looks like Ari has just about done for the day here, Tom Sneva. Out of the car, we're watching Bernard Jourdain right in front of us and on your screen. Chris McClure, take it away. Well, we'll anticipate Chris's arrival as Jourdain, Jourdain in fact, uh, not a bad little pit stop here. We did not put a clock on that one, Eric, but uh, he's away fairly quickly, and we'll try again to Chris along pit road. Okay, we're working leader lap number 38, and as we'd mentioned before, after the long yellow, the window was pushed way up by all of them. Sullivan expected uh, in the next few laps, so is Emerson Fittipaldi. He's in the window they told us about. Alan Sa Jr. and uh, Michael Andretti in lap 37. It's interesting to keep an eye on Bobby Rahal with the Cosworth short strokes. How much more will he get out of the load of fuel if indeed he does? Mileage has not been that much of a factor for that engine as opposed to the Chevrolet. Teo Fabi is about two laps away from his scheduled pit stop, and that will be his first round. He's running in the sixth position. After this, we'll get some indication about the mileage and have a better picture of what the end of the race might hold in terms of fuel available, fuel already used up, and if somebody might be in trouble. Again, a beautiful dice out front. Uh, Going to be dramatic come pit stop time because we've got Danny Sullivan just ahead of Emil. 0.76 seconds, in fact, very tight up there. Oh, he's right there. He's right in the back. It, at these speeds, are they picking up any turbulence straight on? If you come across the wake, you're going to get turbulence, and that was what's happened in the ARS race this morning. But are they, is he picking up any turbulence at all? With Boisel coming into the pits, just answer the question quick here, and we'll get yeah, to the roll. Yeah, not, not a whole lot of turbulence problems, because it's pretty much straight line. The corners aren't that quick that uh, the turbulence is going to be a big factor there, and that's where it's going to upset the car. Okay, let's watch Rule Boisel on the uh, Domino's Pizza, the Lola Judd. Got a clock on him for Shearson Racing. Yes, we do. Up to a dozen, now 13, 14, not bad, not bad. Get the car down. I'll push to the back of the wing, get your fingers in the wicker bill, away Al we go. Al Unser is coming in for his pit stop. Al Unser Jr. is in. All right, two. this is a significant pit stop. If you want to see masterful pit stops, if they can do what they did last year, watch watch the Gallus Racing Team. In. Watch the Gallus like Racing Heimrath Team. Heimrath Jr. is in, but this is the pit stop of the afternoon so far. We'll get to the other guys who are running well down later on, but let's look. No clock on Alan Sir Jr., but that was a very quick stop, Steve Tom Steve. That was a good job. They're yeah, all coming in now. Fabi's in the pits. Uh, yep. You know, this is going to make a big difference. Uh, who's in and out of the pits is going to be uh, who's leading this race after a couple laps. Let's cut down to Chris McClure. Chris. Made its pit stop, and he is away. Good stop for the number eight crew. Alan Sir Jr. got looked like a very good pit stop from the distance I was watching here. You talk about the importance of those, Tom Sneva and fellas. Last year in this race, two stops under 14 seconds, four tires and fuel for Allen. Of course, he won it. The following week, then at the Meadowlands in 1988, two stops, 14 and under, and he also won that race. The leader is in, Danny Sullivan, making Sullivan. his way to his pit. He stops and uh, moves into the pit. This crew is now swarming over the car. It's up on the jacks. It looks like they're going for tires all the way around. The fuel hose is in as we view it from way down at this end of the pit. And they're already away from the tires. It is down off the jacks. The fuel is in and he's away. Great stop for Danny Sullivan. Oh, that's the way you do it. That's what you paid your money to come and see. 13.8. What a job with the Miller High Life team. The Penske people are popping today. Danny Sullivan, We're living now in Aspen, Colorado, originally from Louisville, Kentucky. Three second place finishes in a row. The crew, Tom Sneva, keeps doing things like that. He may just finally win this. Well, that helps, obviously, if you can make up that kind of time in the pits. Uh, it was a little congestion on the exit of the pits. Uh, uh, there was another car 
just leaving at the same time. It wasn't a big problem, but it could have been. Actually, it was Jan Bikus, uh, 16. Uh, Jan made a very impressive pit stop. He got out Both very Fittipaldi fast. Both and Jones Michael in. Andretti are in as well as John Jones. Here are the big guns. Let's Johnny's. put a clock on John Jones here, gentlemen, if we can. Chris McClure, away you go. Okay, we have Bobby Rahal, Emerson Fittipaldi, and Michael Andretti, and there's only four pits for those three cars. They're all there together. The first one in was Ma Emerson Fittipaldi. He's still up on the jack. Now the field is in. He guns it and throws away. Michael Andretti was down off the jack, and it looked like Fittipaldi stalled momentarily. He catches it. Oh! -ho. He wins the race out. Michael was off the jack first, but couldn't get away. They weren't quite finished. And there goes Ray Hall. Ray Hall, I think, got the best pitch top of the three, to be honest with you. He gained some ground on the racetrack with that switch around. Emerson gets back out first. Oh, I said Fittipaldi slowed up, had to slow up on the way out of his pit stop because there was a tire from Ray Hall's crew in his way. A.J. Foyt is in. We get so excited about the pit stops. Let's not forget and hope everybody understands the pit exit rule because last year that caught a lot of guys. you got to make sure they straddle that line or keep all the wheels on the inside. If all four wheels are on the left side of that line, they're going to be brought in for a stop and go if they had a five-second pit stop. So you got to be very careful. Watch those drivers at the end of that line. If they violated the pit exit rule, they're going to have to come back in. It's great to get out quick, but you got to do it legal. And that was the problem last year with Danny Sullivan. Even Ray Hall got caught with one. And Teo Fabi got three or four. So you got to keep your eye on that if, line. if you notice Ray Hall's exit, he was pretty conservative. Uh, he made sure that he was underneath the line or had the wheels oh, yeah. below the line. So. He probably had a nice uh, accent on that in the meeting. Okay. Rick Mears, car number four, running down the roll. Rick's turn. What a joy, though, to watch three top competitors like that in a row in the midst of a pit stop situation. What a beautiful game that is to soak up if you're one of our spectators. The clock is on. The Penske Penzoil PC18 Chevrolet crew of Rick Mears, one half of the Penske racing team. Nine seconds, getting down to the crunch time. The jacks are still up. They're still working on tires. Kind of slow. 15. 15. That's not bad. 15.1 for Rick Mears. Not a bad pit stop at all. Uh, a little lengthier than what we had seen prior, but Rick gets away neatly. Okay. Look at Rick Mears from Bakersfield, California. One events at Phoenix, the opening event. He also won at the mile in Milwaukee, fifth pole at Indy. He went 224.254 miles an hour to Cook for a new lap speed record in Indianapolis. The guy knows how to go fast, but admittedly, he's not the strongest guy in the world on the street or road courses. The huh? new race leader, Alan Sir Jr. In the, oh, that flurry. I'm sorry, Tom, we've got to pick up on the fact that it's JR, little, uh, little Al, who's now leading this event. Not only Little Al, but then comes, uh, then on the racetrack, it's uh, Michael Andretti, Emmo, and Danny Sullivan, who we yep. thought had a great pit stop, but yet he lost three or four spots uh, after the stops were over. The shuffle is on. It's Al Unser Jr., your leader. Michael Andretti, second. Emerson Fittipaldi, third. Danny, Danny Sullivan, fourth. And Bobby Rahal, fifth, your top five. So the pit stops were quick, but they shuffled the deck, didn't they? In fact, uh, with the pit stop flurry, uh, I thought John Jones had done very well on that, but in fact, they show us he's literally dropped off the chart, but the chart, I may question as we go along today. Oh, once in a while, <laughs> the, the computer gulps air instead of gas. Give a chance, to catch, up. Give <laughs> a chance <laughs> to catch up. Exactly. Anyway. A little different for us, I think, being right on top of this situation. Uh, we're following some of these changes a lot more rapidly than the, maybe the timing and scoring game. Well, it was a familiar sight last year at the Molson Indy to have Alan Sir Jr., little Al running up front, and that's exactly where he is right now with a 3.55 second lead on your second place runner, Michael Andretti. He was third, you will recall, last year. Guido Daco in behind, or actually in between, I should say, two very quickly moving cars. Danny Sullivan and Emerson Fittipaldi, and the flag went out for Guido Daco in the 96 to move out of the way. They're about to be swallowed up. What I find interesting is, uh, unless I overlook the pit stop, I didn't think, uh, was Scotty Goodyear in? Yes, he did come he in. He made a stop. Yes, okay. he did. I noted that uh, when we were in some other subject. Okay. okay, in car number 91, the McKenzie Financial Corp, yep. Lola Judd of Scott Goodyear. Made a stop. Yes, he has made a stop. Johnny Jones flips back in then to about 12th overall, so that makes sense. Okay, John's back in the spot that I would think he'd have. Derek Daly making his way with the start-finish line. There goes Randy Lewis. We're having a look at the uh, Steve yep. Celine, the Celine Auto Express March. They should do good pit stops, if nothing else. We'll see, see how they perform here. They're moving rather slowly down there yeah, in the are. Celine pit. They're already up to 15, now going to go to 16, 17, 18 seconds. 
Not a very fast pit stop. Are they going to finally get him out of there? This is an absolutely brutal pit stop. What a shame for Molson Indy rookie Steve Celine from a place called Diamond Bar, California. Danny Sullivan a little quicker. is all over the back end of Emerson Fittipaldi. He was. He gave it a try outside going into one here as he went by our location. We'll try and get a shot of Danny and see how close he is behind Emmo down the straightaway here. Little Al losing time and it's lap two. Michael Andretti down to a 238 now. Uh, lead for uh, Little Al. That's on Michael Andretti, of course, in car number six. But Al Unser Jr. And the team Valvoline Lola Chevrolet, the winner of back to back Long Beach Grand Prix. And the winner of last year's Molson Indy is right up into the clean air in the front of the pack where he is used to running. Little Al, there's Michael flashing by us. A.J. Foyt trying to hang on to that duo and maybe gain some time. <laughs> Got to run for some points. Danny Sullivan now in behind what appears to be Ludwig Heimrath, was it? Yes, it was. Car 71. And Ludwig gets the move over flag from flagman Nick Fenaro. Johnny Jones uh, coming by our vantage point. Uh, Johnny well back into this battle. Teo Fabi certainly cooking at number eight. No and real. here's your top five. Car number two, Al Unser Jr., defending champ for the Molson Indy, sits first. Michael Andretti in car number six is behind him. Emerson Fittipaldi, the fastest man here this weekend, fastest man ever, is third. Behind him, Danny Sullivan. Behind Sullivan is Bobby Rahal. That's the way they look. I'm not sure what's happened to Scott Goodyear. I haven't seen him come around lately. I saw no. some of his crew running down no. to the entrance of the pits. I don't know if he's oh. down in that area or not, uh, but he hasn't been around the racetrack in the last few minutes. We have not picked up on Scotty at all. I'm sure the cameras will try to track him down, but you're right. I, that's why I asked about the pit stop. I, yeah, well, he, he, did stop. he did have his pit stop. Yeah. I know that he did, but maybe something has gone uh, soft, as we said. There's a little bit high math junior going by, 71. Is that Scott Goodyear that just walked underneath us? That's some of his crew. That's that some of his crew. Scotty. I don't think that's Scott. Yeah, crew there. Day may be done for Scott Goodyear. Too what bad. a shame. Another great Canadian hope. Done. He had high hopes for this run, and uh, uh, they gave him a little better than a one-shot effort this year, though, Tom. Uh, Mackenzie Financial going to let Scotty run at Road America as well, so he gets two chances to be great. That, that'll be a good opportunity <laughs> for him. He, uh, he appears to have a lot of talent. It's just tough yeah, to get get the backing to get the equipment to run up front. It's just so brutally expensive, isn't it? It really is. It's, it's tough. Uh, financially, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense from an ownership standpoint, but, uh, you know, it's big time auto racing. And if you're going to play with the big boys, you got to be able to yeah. spend the big bucks. Carry the fat wallet, you can be sure. We are watching the number 20 of Emerson Fittipaldi from Sao Paulo, Brazil, in the Marlboro Penske PC18 Chevrolet. On the Molson Indy Network, we are in lap number 48 out of a total of 103. And the leader, Al Unser Jr., with a 3.20 second lead on Michael Andretti. Then you've got Emerson Fittipaldi third, Danny Sullivan fourth, and Bobby Rahal fifth. There's a look at Emerson, currently third on the board. And into pit row, Scott Pruitt. Scott Pruitt. Yeah. That's another Judd powered car, the Budweiser True Sports Lola Judd. A career best second place finish for him at the Grand Prix of Detroit. He is going to be heard from before this season is over. He's got a bright future ahead of him. A promising young man in that car, Tom Sneva, Scott Pruitt. Yeah, he's got a lot of ability. Uh, that doesn't look like a scheduled stop, so I'm not sure what the problem is over there. Something maybe has cropped up with the Pruitt machine. Leaders are fine. He's out again. He's on the move, oh. and the judge, he's got Scott Pruitt. Finished eighth of the Middlelands. We're going to go around to the pits one more time. And Chris McClure, Chris. I've just been checking with the crews after this round of pit stop and the change up front. Little Al, Al Unser Jr., who, as we mentioned last year, got two sub-14 second pit stops here, which helped him win, certainly. He's on the race course right now, clearing the back marker, Raul Boisel, and continuing to tour in the lead. 13.28, the official time on that pit stop. Now, look at the other guys. 13.9 on the pit stop for Danny Sullivan. However, 
He's in a tough spot to start from anyway, right at the end of the pits. He has to make a hard left and a hard right to stay under that blend line and then go into turn one. Momentum is a hard thing for him to get from that position. Plus, there was a back marker he had to lift for, so that extends the time of the pit stop to a much larger number, and it shows on the scoreboard. Michael Andretti got his four tires and fuel, was down and ready to go away in a reasonable length of time, but call it a 21-second pit stop because the fuel mechanism stuck in the... Uh, uh, feeling a uh, receiver and he had to stop while they pulled and wrestled that away so call it a 21 second pit stop for him Emerson Fittipaldi who had to stop and kind of crank the wheel and go around a tire that was in the pit in front of him was up down with the four tires and fuel in 16.6 but he didn't get away until 21.4 little Al gets the big advantage in that round the pit stop and he leads the race so I guess we're safe to say that uh, once again in Toronto, pit stops play a big, big part of the story. If you're going to spend more than 14, 15 seconds in the pitch, you're not going to be with the program. Is Ludwig this Ludwig Heimrath? Heimrath? Yes, it is. Ludwig Heimrath Jr. has stopped somewhere on the course. You can see it on the Molson car cam. Just past the Prince's gates in turns one and two. They're going to try and pull him back. Whether or not he hit anything or is mechanically disabled, I don't know. Whether or not he just overdrove it and went into the escape area there or not, we're not exactly sure. But, but it would seem to be the end of the day for the McKenzie Financial Cathedral. Another page turns in the black career of Ludwig Heimrath Jr. Randy, Randy Lewis, Lewis is coming in. Back. Car number 28. Toshiba Oracle. Team car Lola Cosworth. Chris McClure, you're right there. Anything happening? Well, Randy Lewis is getting a routine pit stop. The four tires are going on all around, and uh, the motor running fine. There doesn't seem to be any uh, problem with the bodywork. They had an overheating problem early and ripped away what was burning, so that seems to be all right. And the water sprayed on the back, and he is away. We have word from the course. Ludwig Heimrath Jr. broke a motor. Oh, He's boy. Done. Not another one. I mean... He blows these things up like balloons. He blew up six one year, trying to qualify for his first Indianapolis 500. He's now grenaded another Judd. First so things are looking very good for Ron Himmelgarn in that regard. There's a look at Ludwig, originally from Scarborough. Now, as you see, out of Spanaway, Washington. Hasn't driven since the Indy 500, cracking that ribbon in Milwaukee. And as we talk about Ludwig, yes, the other half of the Ron Himmelgarn team, McKenzie Financial Court, Terrible day. We're watching Scott Goodyear move in front of our broadcast location here. Chris, if you can, uh, Scotty's just walking down Long Pit Road. Just hoping you can kind of corner him down here. Right down by the tower here. We can maybe track down that. A bit of a mystery as to why uh, Scott fell out of this. But he's moving down slowly. So now it looks that uh, both cars, both McKenzie Financial Corp, Lola Judds, for Ron Hemmelgarn are uh, now going to be parked. Here's a look. At the battle right now for fourth and fifth. There's the 18 of Bobby Rahal. He's sort of been quietly going about his business today. No one's paying much attention to Bobby Rahal. That could be dangerous. He won here the first one in 86. He's a two-time IndyCar champion, and he's not to be ignored. I think we're riding with Bobby Rahal. There we yes, go we are. The yes, we are. Yes, we are. So the Molson car cam. Still got the one Molson car cam that is working out here. Ludwig Heimann Jr. is uh, down, obviously. And Got a good year back in Long Pit Road. We'll try to tack that story down with Chris in a moment. Ray Hall running very, very strongly. And as we mentioned, he knows how to win here in Toronto. Well, so he does, and he's coming off a win at the Meadowlands last week. The team's been able to do some in-season testing, which is very difficult with our tight schedule to get out and do some testing between races. But they've been able to do that. They figure they've they've gained some things. They found they've learned some stuff, and uh, it's made them a lot stronger. New team with Chevrolet Power next year with Alan Sir Jr. Just give me a quick comment on that before we swing back here. Yeah, that's uh, they should be very tough because uh, they'll both have the good Chevrolet motor that uh, you know right now is a dominant force, and uh, that should help Bobby's uh, chances. I think it would also get the team more testing time too. 53 laps down, so we're beyond the halfway point. It's 103 lap total, of carving away at 54 right now, and it's quite a war between uh, Little L, Michael Andretti, Emerson, and Danny Sullivan, Bobby Rahal, very much a factor here as well. Move over sign, the uh, flag actually for Derek Daly in the number 10 is. Michael Andretti in the number six was moving in hot and heavy on his back end. And Alan Sutcher. Sorry, uh, Jeff, go ahead. The Canadian contingent is down to one for the 89 Molson Indy. That yep. is John Jones currently riding 12th in the bunch. 
Let's go to the top of the board and show you what's happening. Alan Jr., your leader. Lap 54 has been completed, or we're working on it at least. Second place runner, the number six of Michael Andretti, running third, the 20 of Emerson Fittipaldi. Fourth place, Danny Sullivan in car number one. Fifth place, Bobby Rahal in the 18. Sixth, Teo Fabi in the eight car. And then you've got Rick Mears, Fabrizio Barbazza, and Raul Boisel. So it's still Al Unser Jr. And the Chargers up front are now snaking their way through the back markers. Nick Fornaro is just about keeping that move over flag, the blue one with the white diagonal line out just about constantly to warn some of the back markers that the fast front runners are trying to move through. And would they please show courtesy and get out of the way? I think they've dropped the please part when they're showing the flag now. It's just get okay, out of well, the way. It, the please is a given, perhaps. How about that? <laughs> Watching Al Unser Jr. Derek Daly trying to gain some ground. It looked like Bernard Jourdain in car number 69. Back in the pack, so they're trying to, uh, to move up. At least Derek Daly is. And Emerson's got a real pile of traffic sitting directly in front of him. It'll be uh, a little bit of a hole, perhaps. They'll be back in view. And now uh, we're back uh, on the Ludwig Heimrath camera, but the helmet comes off. Oh, boy, and, that's uh, it. JR uh, will be getting out of the car. So. Uh, He's off on one of the exit roads, and we're just getting a view in to uh, some of the race activity from uh, JR's car. A look from the private boxes along pit row here at the Molson Indy, and a, a panoramic view that reminds me somewhat of uh, Indianapolis with the fans funneled up steeply on, on both sides, Tom Sneva. Well, that's true, and it's a, it's a good opportunity for the sponsors, the big corporations, uh, to entertain their customers, their their yeah. friends, their employees, and, and it works out well at racing. You can get them on the inside of the sport, down real close to the pits. Fabrizio Barbazza from Monza, Italy. Not a bad start for Fabrizio. Not uh, bad. Very swift and back at it. That is a year-old Penske. That's a PC-17 with the Cosworth power plant underneath Fabrizio. It's got some, uh, looks like a rag or something trailing on the, the back of... Uh, suspension or the uh, control arm of the rear wheel there maybe have some of the marshals have a look at that something flapping on the back of Fabrizio's number 12 the Archiro Wines car yeah, but Barza has been having a good run here in the last few races since he's gotten into that car a year old Penske uh, it's got a Cosworth but uh, they've been very competitive they have been It's still a little L with uh, about a 209 advantage on Michael Andretti at this point. So Scotty says out of gas. That's well, the word. Uh, Chris will try to get more of a story on that. That's a silly move, but Tom. Uh, well, I'm not yeah. sure what happened. It was after, uh, like we talked about, pit a pit stop. stop so yeah. maybe they didn't get fuel in the car. Or maybe it wasn't taking yeah. fuel, fuel, something like that. But uh, now, is he running the fuel management system? Do you know? I really don't know. He's running that Judd, and they do have an electronic uh, management program. So, okay. uh, But I know they were concerned before the race that mileage is going to be a factor, and I'm not sure if that's going to uh, domino up to the top runners where this is yeah. a very fuelish race course. No, it could be. He was, uh, I make it on lap 46 that he had to retire, okay. running, running out of gas. How frustrating. Something mechanical or a crash you could understand, but to push down the pedal and have nothing happen has got to be very, very frustrating. And that's, of course, what happened to... Uh, Scott Goodyear, of course, both the Ron Himmelgaard cars out of the running here in the 89 edition of the Molson Indy. Well, the real key next might be that final pit stop. Uh, this is where the winner could well be decided. Uh, Look how close Bobby Rahal is to Danny Sullivan. They're getting oh a little slow there through back markers, but Rahal is all over Danny Sullivan. Gets by Derek Daly cleanly as they cross the start-finish line. With Sullivan at 15.07, uh, Bobby at a 15.84. I would say that's close, Jeff. <laughs> A little surprise, Sullivan hasn't made much of a run, uh, much of a gain on the leaders since the yeah. pit stop. So I'm not sure what kind of, he's having a problem or that the leaders made adjustment uh, on the stop that enabled them to run a little harder. Bobby Rahal has got Randy Lewis there, the Rahal 18, or Randy Lewis in the 28 to contend with. As he tries to gain some ground here, we are well past the halfway mark. The halfway mark, a look from the private boxes again at the panoramic view of the crowd along the bend in pit road. Great view of the action and a packed house here at the Molson Indy. They've added a few more seats. I'd like to see the crowd totals at the end of the day. It looks like uh, IndyCar Racing has uh, sort of gotten a hole here in Toronto, and uh, we're happy to see that. That's good. Yeah, it's goodness. It's nice to have it here. It's really awakened this sport in the media, especially in this town and in this country. 
And you're seeing more and more Canadian interest participant-wise as well. A clock on Guido Daco. Guido yes, Daco a clock on Guido Daco. Guido grabbing a stop here and uh, looks like tires all the way around. He's currently running at 15, tires all the way around up on the jacks. Fuel is going in. There's the deflector on the back. The fuel hose comes off, down off the jacks, 18, 19. That's better than the other one. Yeah. He was in there for more than 20 seconds. I think it was 22, 23 last time Guido was on the jacks. That's not bad. That's a little bit better. So with practice, the Guido Daco crew gets a little bit better. Yeah, if he'd have four more stops today, they could get this down to 16, <laughs> maybe, Tom. <laughs> Wrong time to practice, though, during the race. Well, Guido's having a good day up to this yeah, point. He's, he's, uh, really he's running a little bit, a little bit stronger than we've seen him run earlier in the season. A.J. Floyd, just noticing him going by, is running currently in uh, 16th position. He's one down from Guido Daco. Your leader is still Alan Hunter Jr. with a 1.29 second lead on second place runner number six, Michael Andretti. Danny Sullivan still being dogged by Bobby Rahal. There's no question. And we're going to head down to Chris and get a little update on the true story and Scott Goodyear's bad fortune today. Well, first, we, uh, two questions I posed in the pits. Was fuel management aboard? To answer your question up there, yes. And uh, did they think fuel was a problem at that point? No, they thought they had about 10 gallons in the calculations on pit side. So uh, somebody made a big mathematical error there somewhere. Not the kind of thing that you would want to happen to you in running the Molson Indy, especially Scott Goodyear, a man who hasn't had an Indy ride in over a year, almost two years, I guess it is now. Yep. He has no reason not to be uh, proud of what he has done here this weekend. Oh, he's done right amazing now. things for being away from the car for so long in this type of racing. Scott Goodyear has done a remarkable job. If somebody decides to sink some money into this young man, he could have himself a promising career. Bobby Rahal, right on the back end to number 18, right on the back end to Danny Sullivan. Here they come, start finish line. Have a look. Through the back twisty portions of this race course, Ray Hall is getting right up close to Sullivan. Oh, he is. And Danny's able to move it away a little bit as he goes into the straightaway and that kind of thing. And Danny, of course, is used to this close quarter kind of battling. If you remember the result of the 87 race, he and Emerson Fittipaldi tangled in the last turn of the last lap. And Emmo went on to win, but Sullivan is used to this close uh, quarter contact. Down to Chris McClure again. Well, we know you're down there, Chris. Uh, and we're watching the Ray Hall battle, of course, uh, on uh, the Mosul Indy Network at this very moment. And met a Chris adds that uh, little update on Bobby. We'll get back to him. But in the meantime, he truly is giving Danny Sullivan a real one for his money out here. Well, a, couple, a couple of spots farther up. Uh, little Al still leading, but uh, Michael Andretti is, is not losing ground. He, yep. in fact, might be chipping away a little bit at, uh, at little Al's lead. Emerson uh, running uh, fairly well alone at this point. He's uh, found his own little island, sort of sitting there in third place. Said, uh, Tommy, he'll hold on to it maybe till next pit stop time. He's over nine seconds behind the leader, Alan Sir Jr., and uh, seven seconds in change behind the second pace runner, Michael Andretti. Here we go, officially, lap 63 of 103 in total. Your leader, car number two, Alan Sir Jr., second place, Michael Andretti in car number six. Running in third, the number 20 of Emerson Fittipaldi, who sat on the pole. In fourth place, the number one of Danny Sullivan. And in fifth, the number 18 of Bobby Rahal. Any one of those five could come on and win this thing. Don't go home. It's not over yet. It's an old cliche, but it's so true, isn't it? It really is. And uh, obviously, the last pit stop is going to be a big, big factor in the outcome of this race. Chris McClure, you're standing by again. Hey, yeah, there we go. Fresh yeah, battery yeah. does make a world of difference. Uh, <laughs> quick point about Bobby Rahal. You know, they had a test at Mid-Ohio prior to the Meadowlands, and they really felt that they had improved the entire package there, and particularly the handling through twisty parts. And I think we've seen that manifest in the last few minutes in the battle with uh, Danny Sullivan out there right now. They are using, I guess, what some people termed a Formula One wing in the front. It has double winglets on each side. It's designed to uh, create a little cleaner flow down into the tunnels. So nice, clean air going down there. Give them a better grip and, and, and better handling at fast uh, portions of the course as well as in the slow portions. That may be part of what Bobby Rahal is experiencing out there as he battles with Sullivan. We'll keep our eye on him, Chris. Alan Jr., though, in fact, our race leader. And once he's gotten in front, I'll tell you, this lad wants to make it two years in a row. There's no question. Uh -huh. 
We have not had a multiple winner yet in the Molson Indy, nope. Jeff Howitt. What is your prediction? You think we might have one this year? I'm going to say no. Wow. Simply because the odds are against it. I got another against Little Al. Brave I'm man, just going to you say, are a brave man to predict I'm going to say no. We've got a lot of racing to go, and we got a pit stop to go yet. Yes, we do. And there's Rick Mears, the number four. Alan Junior, number two, Martin his tail. Steve Celine in car number 59. And there is the number six of Michael Andretti. Now, if Michael gets by Celine, and if both of them can get by Mears, <laughs> this, this might be a little area where they could bunch up a touch here. There's some interesting mix of traffic they're dealing with. Alan are now, Alan Jr. moving on lap number 64. This is his 100th consecutive IndyCar race for the man from Albuquerque, New Mexico, the second generation driver. A remarkable string of uh, 100 consecutive entries. Not bad. Watching Rick Mears in the Penske Pennzoil PC18 Chevrolet, the master of the ovals, the fastest man in Indy cars, and the winningest driver of the 80s decade. But unfortunately, what he's doing is holding off Al Jr., who wants to get by and put a lap down on him. But we thought Rick might have had a better run today. As um... Yeah, I'm surprised that Al's uh, been able to catch up. But, uh, you know, Rick's running well. He's uh, probably in the top 10, so it'll be interesting to see how easily little Al's able to get by yeah. and if Michael's able to close the gap a little bit as he tries to get by Rick Mears. Am I the only one surprised that Emerson Fittipaldi is uh, somewhat distant in third? He's almost 10 seconds out. I have a feeling he may just be biding his time here. We are well past the halfway mark. We're in lap number, what's that, 65? What do you think, huh? I don't think so. I think he'd be closing the gap if he thought he could. And, uh, you know, it's just that, you know, the car's either not quite right or, or Michael and uh, little Al are just a little bit stronger today at this point. Another shot from the Goodyear blimp as they head down to the Princess Gates. A little one-two turns, and then way down that long lakeshore straightaway where speeds get up to 170, 180 miles per hour. Little Al still wrestling to try and get by Rick Mears out there. And they come up on more traffic, of course, which is bound to happen, so it's going to uh, sort of add to the problem. Here's where Little Al can make a move. He does There it. he does. Oh, on the inside. Rick didn't want to let him go by, I don't think. A little back marker got in the way there, looking like a little duck shoot. A little bit of... Distraction there. Fabrizio Barbetsa, in fact, uh, exactly. is exactly who uh, was the testman in that car number 12. And Alan Sir Jr. tucked it around on the inside and moved by Rick Mears. And he gets by a momentary clog in the drain. And now he can start to put some distance on himself. And the second place runner, Michael Andretti, in car number six. Wow. We're aboard with Bobby Rahal. All righty, let's watch him move by the Better Living Building. Now he's going to come around the fountain turn, as we call it, down around the back part of the course. Right up to third gear. In about third gear. Now he's up in about fourth. As we swing over the camera to uh, Danny Sullivan in car number one. There goes Bobby right on Danny's tail. So we were watching that pursuit. And oh, yes, we were. For a moment. On the Molson car cam, some nice shots from that one. Into the front straight goes that battle, in fact. And... Uh, Danny Sullivan holds him up. 86 of Dominic Dobson getting the move over flag for Nick Fanoro. Dominic hasn't been here since the first race in 86. And he placed a 16th, it was, behind inaugural winner Bobby Rahal in 1986. Tom, you drove that race that year. You must have memories of that in the Skull Bandit. I remember it. Yeah, Do we you? did. We, uh, <laughs> we had some decent finishes here, in fact, in Toronto. But uh, it's a fun racetrack from a driver's standpoint, especially from a temporary circuit. It's one of the funner uh, racetracks we run on that, that is a temporary-type circuit. Bobby Rahal is having a tough time getting around a back marker. I can't see who it is. Sullivan got around him. Rahal tried to at the end of the straightaway and going up into four. And over Ray Hall's shoulder on the cam, the car cam that we have, we can see Bobby shaking his fist at whoever that was. He's by him now. Yep. The man got a little wide there for a moment and, in fact, held Bobby off. Uh, here's Big Al again, our race leader. Well, make it a little Al. Can be frustrating sometimes, gentlemen, to get caught in behind back markers. And Bobby Ray Hall has no patience for slower cars. I remember in the season opening event at Phoenix, he got uh, blocked in behind Bernard Jourdain and eventually got tangled up with him. And there was a, a lot of finger wagging in the cockpit of those cars for Mr. Ray Hall. So you can't get frustrated to get by slower cars when you know you've got, you know, a great amount of horsepower to get by these guys. You want to do it safely, well, but you, you want to get by them, don't you? Yeah. You have to, and you got to get by, but traffic's a big part of it. Everybody's got to get through it. The guy that can anticipate and predict the other guy uh, the best 
have the luck of catching him at the right time on the racetrack. Uh, some places on the racetrack are easier to get by than others, and if you catch him at the right time, you go right by. If you don't, uh, sometimes you got to wait part of the racetrack to get in an open spot where it's, it's more accessible to pass. Beautiful example of passing, in fact, uh, that we witnessed right there. Finally, we are going to pick up a little bit on Emmo, I think. Uh, we've been ignoring the poor man. He's been sitting there quietly in third and hasn't had a camera on him in uh, about 10 or 15 minutes, uh, Tom. But uh, we'll give him some exposure right here as he comes up on Rick Mears now. Rick, obviously, uh, must be having a problem, I would think, Tom. Everyone flashing by him, putting yeah, him on down. Yeah, he's uh, not running, running as quick today. as he'd like to. Uh, Kevin Cogan in the pits there. Again, probably the start of the second round of pit stops. Okay. The clock is running. Let's see what the might be a sign for of activity here. Schaefer Beer Machinist Playboy Fashions car can do. Their crew John as John Johnson. Jones enters the pits as well in car number 65. 15 seconds and a half for Kevin Cogan. Not bad. We don't have a no clock, clock John. on Plus him. The action. Some action down there in the John Jones pit. The Labatt Photofab Lola Cosworth. Michael Andretti in. Michael Andretti is also in. A spray of water on the back end of the 65, and now we're looking at Michael Andretti. No clock on Michael. Yeah, sure. Uh, Chris McClure, where you go? Okay, Michael's in, he's already gotten the tires. Jack, the field is John Jones coming up. John Jones just on his hip, Michael Andretti. Let's Jones go and then swing uh -huh. to the left for the exit of the pits. Good pit stop for the crew, though, and away cleanly. Jones really wasn't a factor in slowing Michael down, even though he had to stay to the right a little bit. There were no occupied pits just up from him, so he was able to do that and still accelerate, go through the gears. Well, Michael moves away with lots of determination from John Jones. That was a long stop for Jones, I think. Yeah, I think it was. It went yeah. well over 13 or 14. What do yeah. you think, Tom? Well, they were doing something in the cockpit. I don't know if uh, he had some kind of problem. They were giving him extra water or what the problem was, but they did a lot of stuff in the cockpit that uh, took some added time. Lap number 70. We are working on lap 7-0 out of a total of 103. And it is still Al Unser Jr., your leader. Well, Emerson uh, Fittipaldi running second, Jim, Danny Sullivan third, Bobby Rahal, Michael Andretti, Teo, Bobby Rick Mears, Scott Pruitt, and Raul Boisel. This is Scott Brayton in the Amway Lola with Cosworth Power. And the clock is running on Scott Brayton and the Amway crew. This driver out of Coldwater, Michigan. He came sliding to a halt. I don't think he put any flat spots on the tires. He didn't really skid that long. 10, 11, now moving into a dozen seconds, 13, 14. She's getting kind of long, boys and girls. Scott Brayton in the 22, finally down off the jacks and moving out slowly. He stalled last time, 17.9 for Scott Brayton. In car 18 number seconds is a long time. That is a long a time. Pit stop. He was 14th here last year at the Molson Indy. I don't know if he's going to be doing as well this year. They have a look at him, qualifying 20th, residing in Coldwater, Michigan. Oh, no. Oh, no. A.J. Foyt has come a, to a halt out somewhere a, out here in the wilderness. So the problems of A.J. Foyt, he had to change a motor. A few temper tantrums here on Friday when the crew couldn't do much. He got out and wielded the tools himself. Had to change the motor, had a fire in the motor. The next qualifying round, he never did qualify. He was added as a promoter's option. And now the man who holds the record with 67 career IndyCar wins, the four-time Indy 500 winner, A.J. Foyt Jr. out of Houston, Texas, has come to a halt. That's another chunk of bad news here this afternoon. You know, we're picking up on the odd in-camera shot from Bobby Ray Hall, and he is truly giving Danny Sullivan a real run for his money here. It's a beautiful fight. Uh, this one will be decided come pit stop time. We now hone in on Emerson Fittipaldi, who's sitting in second place at this stage until... Uh, Ray Hall! Ray Hall tries it! Wheel. Oh, boy. No, he did not take him. It, it, was, wow. it was on the outside going down the back straightaway, and uh, he would have had to get a long ways in front before uh, he was going to be able to do it on the outside in that particular corner. There's a lot riding with this ride of Bobby Rahal, Tom Sneva. The win in the rain at the Meadowlands last weekend broke a string of 12 consecutive victories for the Chevrolet power plant, broken by the short stroke uh, Cosworth engine. Watching uh, Emerson Fittipaldi in the pits. We'll the get pitch. back to that in a second. We're going to go to McClure. Hit it, Chris. Okay, Emerson is in. It's up on the jacks. They're going for four tires all the way around. The fuel is going in. This is the second pit stop. All the tires are now locked and on position. And they're waiting for it to come down off the... There goes Gunsey engine in first. And he's an off and very good pit stop. Applause around here. Emerson Fittipaldi done it very well. His crew did it very well for him. So he's back in competition looking for another win in 89. 
15 oh, flat on that pit stop. Now, is that strategy for Fittipaldi to come in early like that, count on getting a great stop and get out ahead of the other ones? Well, I'm not sure if that was early. I think that was scheduled, and uh, they stretched as far as they could. You notice when he left the pits, he came out right behind Michael Andretti, so it looked like he might have gained some, uh, some seconds with the pit stop. He closed the gap on that position. Anytime around lap 70 on, I think you're looking at a scheduled pit stop, Tom. I think you're right. But just getting back to that engine story we were talking about, that uh, victory by Ray Hall last weekend broke the string of 12 consecutive Chevrolet victories with that experimental DFS short stroke Cosworth. If he can pull off another victory here with another Cosworth win, that is really going to send some people who would cut off one of their legs for a Chevrolet engine to think, well, maybe there's something in this Cosworth power plant. It gets everybody thinking, doesn't it? Well, it really will. It'll give the Cosworth people some hope, but uh, I think most of that's in the chassis. The motor's running good. They've closed the gap on the Chevrolet. He keeps closing the gap on Danny, and then they get in traffic, and he loses uh, loses a little bit a couple times. They're about ready to do for a pit stop, so, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happened, who's leading before and after that stop. Oh, look at this. Kogan and Barbatsa at 11 and 12 blocking Danny Sullivan with Ray Hall hot in his heels. The back markers have really become a factor here. Dominic Dobson, car number 86 on the clock is operating on the Texaco Haviland star Lola Cosworth for Dominic Dobson. Dominic uh, running about the 11th overall when he uh, grabbed this uh, pit stop. He'll lose it. notch. Bernard Jourdain comes in as well. 16.9, not too shabby really. Also in the pits is Foyt, who we thought was down and out, but he's uh, he's in the pits now, and they put the fuel in the car, and he's he's on his way. They're gonna refire. He's killed the motor. Well, it's Danny out. Sullivan's into the pits. Danny Sullivan into the pits. Chris McClure, are you anywhere down there? Well, I can't quite from my vantage point. I'll try and move over. Can we call it from the Go monitor here? There, yeah. The car call stays on the. Now it's up on the jacks. Changing tires. It looks like all the way around on Danny Sullivan's number one. Fuel going in the top. This has got to be a scheduled pit stop. 10, 11, 12 seconds. Car down off the Jackson, 13.4, and he stalls it. Danny Sullivan stalled it. He's got to roll back to get it restarted. Tough break there. 13.4 would have been a fabulous stop. Going to have to roll it back twice. What a. Oh, this is really going to slow things down for Danny Sullivan. Heartbreak City for car number one. Teo Fabi dives into pit row, number eight, and I think Sullivan has blown the race away with the he action. He just right might have. He's out now, but you're quite right, Jim Paulson. That may have been the contest in the ball game right there. What an awful break, Tom Steven, for Danny Sullivan. Oh, well, it is, but uh, you know that's part of the driver's job to get her in and out of the pits. And when the competition's this tight, uh, you can't afford those kind of mistakes. Oh, Teo Fabi in the role of crowd pleaser, big rooster tails and smoke as he took off. Every time they see smoke here, they go wild in the stands, and rightly so too. Overshooting, in fact, on a pit stop here. Al Unser Jr. Jr. is dead oh on the track. We're looking at Al Unser Jr. Al Unser Jr. in Out traffic has slowed to a stop. Well, that's interesting. He's tried to stretch his pit stop. I don't know if that's fuel related or not. I but, would uh, guess it might be. I'm only guessing, but yep. you said fuel, oh, and no. you must know something, or at least feel something, a little instinct there, looking for fuel. What a shame there for Al Unser Jr. There Bobby is your new leader, Rahal. Bobby Ray Hall from Dublin, Ohio, in car number 18. He's going to have to come in soon, too. So the 86 winner, the inaugural winner, Bobby Rahal, two-time IndyCar points champion. The winner here in 86, winner last weekend in the reign of the Meadowlands. We talked about him, and look where he is now in front. What a series of stories here with uh, Danny Sullivan bobbling it along pit row on the pit stop. Little Al probably over gambling on fuel, as you point out, Tom. Now uh, he's getting out. Al Unser Jr. is getting out of the number two. If he can, there he is. He's looking down around him, wondering if he's got some fuel. Or I don't know what exactly the problem would be there, Tom. Any guesses? Well, now it looks like it might be more than fuel. He probably wouldn't get out of the car if he thought it was just out of fuel. He'd try to get it towed back to the pits and then try to continue in the race. So it might be more serious than just fuel. Any guesstimation what it might be? Uh, no, no idea. Okay. You know, it, it went dead in a hurry. I don't know if he touched something or if it's mechanical on the motor. It just... Hard to speculate. He seemed to be brushing himself off as he got out. I don't know whether something had squirted on him or something like that. It's tough to say. 77th lap, Bobby Rahal, oh winner boy. of round one. And our Molson <laughs> Indy grabs a lead again in 89. Lap 77, and Bobby Rahal is your new leader. Michael Andretti second, Emerson Fittipaldi third. Then you've got Al Enser Jr., but of course he's out of the car, and he's going to tumble down this leader ladder pretty quickly with that. 
Still got Michael Andretti in here, very much a factor on that 77th lap. Emerson Fittipaldi, don't ignore this man. Danny with that sloppy pit stop, and Rick Mears, still a bit of a factor as well as we gaze at the top five. Another shot from our Goodyear blimp, and there is the equipment on the track flag. Allen's a junior pit. Let's go down to Chris McClure and get an explanation from Gallus. Go, Chris. Well, very difficult. There's a, a lot of long faces down here, as you can well understand. No question about it. And it does appear to be just a fuel problem. He ran out on the race course. Everybody very, very down after this turn of events because they had a chance to really get back in the hunt for 1989 after struggling since Indianapolis for a variety of reasons. Today looked like their day and a brief a minor miscalculation. It's over. A tough break there for Alan Sir Jr., who really does like this, uh, the city of Toronto in the race course. Look at Derek Daly, another jet powered car, Tom. Yeah, Derek had job. some trouble at the beginning of the they race. Got front wing adjustments there. They got a brand new front wing on Derek Daly's Rainer Garage Door Lola Jet. Looks like they're going to put a new set of wings on the front there. Bobby Rahal is still not pitted, has he, for the second time? I don't believe he has. I don't think so. To the I best of our recollection, I don't think sure Ray Hall has pitted the second time. No, He's I don't think he has. 80, is he not now? Well, anywhere from 70 to 80 by uh, past memory serves correct. That's about the time you're going to commit for your second stop. And uh, to the best of our recollection, Ray Hall, the leader, has not yet been in for pit stop number two. You know what happened with Alan Sir Jr. when he tried to stretch it, he ran out of juice. So uh, anything can happen. We're looking up close and personal. Michael Andretti in car number six, the Kmart Chevrolet, Kmart Haviland Chevrolet for Newman Haas. Of course, Mario Andretti retiring early in that crash with a stationary car, that one of Roberto Guerrero earlier on in the contest. So Michael still hangs in there, but Michael has had his share of bad luck as well this year, too. He really has. He's maybe due for some good luck. Uh, he's made his second stop in and out cleanly, so it'll be interesting to see when Ray Hall pits, uh, how they end up after the pit stop shuffle. Rick Mears, Rick Mears in car number four, the Penske Pennzoil PC18 Chevrolet. Rick Mears currently at the moment running in fifth position. Got a clock on him. And, yes, let's uh, have a look and see what they do. This is a very, very fast crew. Roger Penske's two crews are very, very quick, notoriously. Seven, eight, coming into nine, 10, moving in on the 12 second neighborhood. He's still up on the jacks, 13, 14. This is gonna be a long one for Rick Mears. Some instructions, 17, 18. He's getting held up in here. This could be a very, very slow, yes it will be, 21.1. Nothing uh, really normal there, something out of the ordinary. You see them very quickly, usually in the Penske pits, but that extremely slow stop for the number four of Rick Mears from Bakersfield, California. You also see Ray Hall's crew out in the pit lane ready for him, so we can expect Ray Hall in any second. Uh, a lot of times the second pit stop's gonna be a little slower because there's not as much fuel in the fuel tank, and so you don't have the, the as big a head and not as much gravity to flow the fuel quite as quick. And you wanna get it all in there, don't you? You gotta have it all. Every last Here drop. Here comes Ray Hall. All right. Chris, take it away as Ray Hall comes in. And Bobby Ray Hall makes his second appearance in the pits in this event. Cosworth comes to a rest along with the race car. It is up on the jacks. They are going for tires all around the fuel on the way in. So far, routine and clean. Everything going well as it should in the pit stop. Holding the revs up just a little bit, maybe a couple of thousand. It is down off the jacks. The fuel is in, and he is away. Whoa! Good stop. 14, good stop. One. 14 seconds, just around 14 seconds. Crew. Right on, Chris. 14-1 is the time we get on Ray Hall. Nice run. That could have won the race for him right there. Could have. We'll keep that and put a little star beside it because that could be a very, very important maneuver. Bobby Ray Hall from Dublin, Ohio. Scott Pruitt in, followed by uh, 16, Jan Vikas. Scott Pruitt is in. A young man out of Roseville, California, with that tremendous drive of the Detroit Grand Prix, just losing it to Emerson Fittipaldi at the last second. That's a Judd Power plant in that Lola. Down off the jack, Scott Pruitt is off and moving. No, he stalls the car. These cars are geared so high and the engines are so hot and tight that it's not uncommon to see them stall the cars. Jan Pikas, There's a the Bettenhausen Sony entry. Right, a beautiful stop. And Jan Pikas in car number 16 is out and away and so is the number three of Scott Pruitt. So pit stops have played a big part of our story here today, Tom Sneva. They really... They really have. Uh, usually in each race, they're a big, big factor. Here today, it's amazing how many people are killing the motor in the pits. Yeah. I'm surprised at that. Did they try another gear? I don't, you're right, I don't remember them stalling so much. Have they tried a different gearing, perhaps? Uh, 
I, I'm not sure. You know, the cars have a six-speed transmission, so they have a lot of different selections they can make, and they don't need to be running a real high first gear now because they have, a, you know, five other speeds to get around this race course. But they are stalling a lot in the pits. I don't think I've ever seen as many cars stalling, Jeff. It may be early to say this, but Fittipaldi seems to have put a move on in the last little while. He was trailing when he was sitting third before Ray Hall pitted. Fittipaldi was 10 seconds behind Andretti, or close to that, and now he's up to eight and a half. Let's uh, reestablish that leaderboard with uh, number six, Michael Andretti, still your race leader. In fact, uh, 8.29 seconds ahead of Emerson Fittipaldi. And then it's Bobby Ray Hall, 19.4 back of Andretti. Danny Sullivan, tail Bobby, Rick Mears down the line. Here's another shot from the Goodyear blimp. Just beyond the Princess Gates, the Molson sign. And also notice, too, for those who may be driving down the, the highway, they're putting up the Molson Indy results and standings on the sign along the highway. Chris McClure, you're standing by once more. Quick check. Uh, quick check with uh, the, the team management engineer for Emerson Fittipaldi. Uh, the space. the space was diminishing there. Well, I we think got we're some working. bad yeah, break up there. Chris McClure's microphone. We'll get back to him as we see Randy Lewis in car number 28. The clock is operating on the Toshiba Oracle team car. Lola Cosworth underneath Randy Lewis from Hillsborough, California. Chucks the water bottle away. Fuel hose is off. Has he killed the motor? Looks like he has. The clock is running 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 seconds. Another drink. For Randy Lewis. Steve Celine in along pit row again. Some problems, well. the cowling, the covers coming off the nose are going to work on the inside of on Randy Lewis. Now they're going to get him out. Uh, that was about a day and a half, I think. Yeah, yeah I think so. He could have gone for a sandwich at the time it took him to get up there. 31 something. In fact, Chris, we're, we're going to try you again. No, sorry, uh, Jim along pit row. Chris, take it away. Okay, well, uh, what we were trying to say a moment ago, Mo Nunn, with the uh, team manager engineer for Pat Patrick Racing down there, we asked him with the uh, space diminishing between the front and Emerson Fittipaldi, yes, he is. was he speeding up? They said yes. He is going faster. The man in the front is not going slower. Bobby Ray Hall. Bobby There's smoke back. coming from Ray Hall's car. Smoke coming from the engine compartment of Ray Hall's car. He's got the motor shut off and yes, the cow's coming off. Oh, boy. Tom, it's gone. What a break. And that turns the lead over to Michael Andretti. Michael Andretti in car number six will shift up into the lead in car number six, as we said. From Nazareth, Pennsylvania, the Kmart Haviland Lola Chevrolet. So the one remaining half of the Newman Haas race team still very much in contention. Michael Andretti, our third place finisher last year, now leading the event. We are into lap number 85. Lap 85. But 18 to go. Michael Andretti has been in this position before this year. But Emerson Fittipaldi sitting right there in second place. Right? Emmo has 9.84 seconds to make up. He has 18 laps to do it. That's quite a chunk of time each lap. There's a look. Lap 85 of 103. Jim, why don't you run it down for us? Okay, quick run down. Lap 85. 103, as Eric mentions. Michael Andretti, our race leader, number six. Followed by Emerson Fittibaldi, number 20. Then in third place, number one, Danny Sullivan. Fourth place, number eight, Teo Fabi. In fifth. Car number four, Rick Mears, not doing bad at all today, Tom. Uh, Ray Hall, unstrapping, Bobby Ray Hall, unstrapping. And another tough break there. Boy, we've had some promising runs snuffed out in quick order here, Tom. Really have, uh, but that's part of racing. You know, there's a lot of things that can go right or wrong, and uh, racing luck wasn't with Bobby today. Be no second victory for Bobby, not in the Molson Indy. Nope. Well, maybe we'll have a first-timer in Michael. We've had uh, nothing in the way of repeat winners so far after three runs of the Molson Indy. Oh, oh no. The Jones, Jones has stopped. Has yes. stopped on the race course. Yep. Car he's number 65. Jones has stopped somewhere, Jim. The last great Canadian hope, <laughs> and he's out of a tough. Yeah, that's tough because uh, having a good run, you know, a good showing by the Canadians, all of them this weekend. Chris, you've got some information on our two uh, exit people here. Go ahead. We have information that uh, Bobby Rahal and John Jones came together out there. Ah, We're confirming ah, that now. Ah, okay. Possible. Didn't spot the damage there. Uh, we thought it was internal, in fact, on Bobby. Well, indeed, that entanglement with John Jones may have broken something or whatever, but 
We saw smoke from the engine compartment as we have a look at the pod of the CN Tower. And if you were up there, you can get a nice panoramic view of the race. Crank it in with a telescope, I guess. Look at the Molson board along the Gardner Expressway that was running the results as we had them for the folks along the, uh, the highway. We're not fortunate enough to have tickets. Now we're looking at the number 20 of Emerson Fittipaldi. And look at this. 7.90 seconds. Emerson is behind the leader, Michael Andretti. That's a second closer than he was a lap ago. So Emo is on the hunt again. No, this crafty old shark, Tom, he's hanging in here. I tell you, keep an eye on this guy. Well, he's <laughs> tough, you know. He, uh, he hasn't had all the success by uh, laying back, and uh, he gets pretty gritty towards the end of the race. So, you know, we'll just have to see what happens. Michael's had some bad luck. He's had some problems finishing races. And we'll see if he can stay out of trouble the rest of the race. Celine is back in again too soon. He had a nice pit stop last time, but bang, already Steve Celine back in pit row. Whoa, it was a stop and go almost. Car number 59, Steve Celine, and you are with the Kmart Haviland Lola Chevrolet of Michael Andretti. Attendance, 61,156 of us in attendance here today at the Molson Indy. Put your hands together, you deserve a round of applause. 61,156 today's attendance. A fabulous crowd on behalf of Molson Indy and Championship Auto Racing teams. We thank you. Down to Chris McClure, Chris. Well, part of Ray Hall's problem is the broken exhaust. There's also fluid coming out of the car at the moment, so it all is intertwined in terms of a reason. John Jones has gotten bump started back around. They're checking the tires as he stops in the pits right in front of us. Just a second ago, Fabrizio Barbazzo, who was in sixth place, and uh, the crew, which is gleeful about that, has come in, and he is back into the competition. Jones is not getting any uh, anything done to the car except inspection of the tires. I guess they're putting some fuel in at the moment, but John Jones uh, should be away. They tried to flip him a water bottle, went right over his head. He missed it. He's been here a while, but he just wants to get back on the race course, finish running, race for what position is available. Now they have uh, most of the work concluded, and I believe he is away, and there is damage on the front of the car. The right front wing is gone. He came together with somebody. Frustration, certainly, but at least able to continue in the late going. And when you get stopped completely out on the course, that's never a guarantee. Well, John Jones' car has been beat around a little bit here, Tom Cena, but he's out there and still running. You've got to do that. Yeah, right side wing, both front and rear, uh, had serious damage. They uh, tried to replace it. There was some confusion in the pit stop, but uh, it's tough to adapt when you've got pieces hanging off the race car. Late in the race like that, though, they probably felt it was faster just to go on, lose less time than trying to take the time to replace all the broken parts. Interesting story. We've been following story. closely car number 20 of Emerson Fittipaldi, the fastest guy here yesterday, and he's trimming the distance between him and Michael Andretti. Andretti's still leading, but the distance, the gap is now 5.89 seconds. Fittipaldi is closing. Average speed, by the way. Sorry, Tom, go ahead. Well, the thing we don't know is if Michael's in fuel trouble, he's had to turn the power down, and that's the reason Emmo's gaining, or if, uh, if Emmo's car is working a little bit better than uh, Michael's at this point. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. He's not riding the boost too heavily. Just in case you're keeping track, according to our, our readouts here, the average speed at this point is just under 90 miles an hour, 89.48. The best speed for the leader, Michael Andretti, 104.69. So they are indeed a good chunk down from uh, the sizzling qualifying times of Emerson Fittipaldi, but that's to be expected under race conditions. But just in case you're keeping track of that, those are the numbers to this point. We are in lap number 90. Lap number 90, just 13 more to go. Lap 91 out of 103 and a quick rundown. With Michael Andretti as our race leader, Emerson Fittipaldi closing in number 20, sitting in second place. Then number one, Danny Sullivan. Eight, tail Bobby. Four, Rick Mears. Still very much a part of this battle behind him is Scott Pruitt. Raul Boisel, Fabrizio Barbazza has got to be ecstatic today, Tom. It's one of their great runs this year. It is. They're having a good day. Good uh, they've had a little trouble finishing races, but uh, they're well into it now, and it uh, looks like it should be a good day for those people. Oh, I, they've got to be gleeful down here. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they've been pulling off their pit stops beautifully. Uh, everything working very smoothly for Fabrizio, who could end up... Uh, well, certainly top six. Kevin Kogan, mind you, still hanging in there nicely behind uh, Fabrizio. Well, we have a story developing here with 91 laps now in the books. And Michael Andretti's lead on second place runner Emerson Fittipaldi. Cars six and 20, 6.12 
seconds. Could be building, could be building for one of our patented Molson Indy heart-stopping finishes we've come to get used to over the last little while, especially in 87. And maybe a new name on the winner's platform uh, as the number one man. That's Quite possible. certainly possible today. Michael Andretti there getting by some back markers. So you see the lag time or the interval between leader Michael Andretti in car six and the second place runner Emerson Fittipaldi. 5.22 now on the board. It is a lot the way you look at it now, but as Jeff Howitt pointed out, Jeff, it is whittling down at a steady rate. That's true, yeah. Tom Sneva pointing out too, though I'm, I was quick there to give Fittipaldi the credit with, with making up that distance, but as Tom said, it may well be that Michael is backing off the boost a little bit. Well, it's just, you just don't know from our standpoint, but uh, you know, traffic could be a factor later. Uh, six seconds looks like a lot on the racetrack, but it uh, doesn't take too many sneezes to get that caught up. <laughs> and Reddy's been in this position before, Tom. Now, is he sitting in the cockpit thinking 11 more laps to go, 10 more laps to go, keep it going? Well, I'm sure he is, especially if fuel is a concern for the team. Uh, he's, he's, you know, got some a lot of thoughts going through his mind, and uh, let's hope they all stay positive. John Jones is back along pit row. The car back up on the, do they have the jacks up? It looks like they are. They're doing some, no, work on the front end. Oh, nose comes off, yep. They've stripped him down totally, Tom. Taking that <laughs> wing right off. Yeah, no, they don't, no right front wing yep. at all. And Chris McClure, take it away. Well, after the last pit stop, we spoke with Emerson Fittipaldi's crew, and they stated emphatically fuel was not an issue for them. Uh, that remains unchanged, at least outwardly. Now, it's a little more uh, concern in the Michael Andretti pit. You know, uh, one of the people, key people there just said, you know, you pit, you lose. Is it going to be close, I asked. Well, it's always close, I'm told. Uh, is it a big concern? Well, I don't know. So it is. I think that's the answer you read between the lines. But right now, they've just got to simply go. Even with the long yellow, they said, you take that yellow out. And they've been going. And they've been going very, very, very fast. They have been consuming a lot of fuel. There's Michael Andretti flashing by. 94th lap is down for Michael. He can almost begin to smell victory here, I think, Tom. Well, yeah, but the, the gap, uh, you know, it's dwindling a little bit. So uh, Emmo is able to close the gap. I don't know if that's because. There's a look at John Jones, and you just pointed at the screen. Now it's gone back up to 5.97 seconds. The interval we're talking about between your leader, Michael Andretti, and second place runner, Emerson Fittipaldi. It's now 5.97 seconds. It was as low as four and change, yeah. but now it's gone up one click. So it's, uh, well, it's well, not turning into a, a definite situation. Bobby Ray Hall sitting there dejected. He knows he should be in this. He runs very strongly in Toronto, and that's not where he wants to be sitting. Ah, oh, but come on, people. Michael Andretti would be a new name again in 1989. Be exciting to have another different winner. And, ah, uh, oh, come on, Tom. Michael's due for a win. He really is. Michael's run real strong all year. He's had some great runs uh, that have ended uh, prematurely. So, uh, you know, he's overdue, and I'm sure the whole team feels the same way. So uh, a few more laps. Let's see if he can keep it out of trouble. Lap number 95. We're working on lap 95. Chris McClure once again in pit row. Well, just to kind of add to what Tom said or react to it, in terms of Michael Andretti, he's led every race this year except Portland. And he's sort of, he didn't state it directly wow. on Friday at a press conference here, but he sort of alluded to it that Emerson, the man you see right there on the screen in the number 20 car, has at least a couple of wins that Michael really thought should have been his during this season, considering Detroit. But, you know, you've got to get all the way to the end, and Michael fully understands that as well. But he really wants to break this string. He hasn't won a race since Miami in 1987, except last fall's uh, Marlboro Challenge, which was held down in Miami in the rain. And John Jones returns and now shuts it down in the pits in the number 65 car. Michael Andretti certainly do. He thought he should have won a couple already, and it's been a long drought for him. Almost two full seasons since he got there first. I think it would be a... The last Canadian in the race today, John Jones, shutting down the office. He's right out of it. Yep. Yep. To shut her down. Well, Try the wing it. off. I guess that didn't work, Tom. They tried it without the wing. Obviously, he did not have the downforce he wanted. He shut it down for the day. Yeah, they did. I, he obviously couldn't run as quick, but uh, maybe it got more serious than that, or they knew they wouldn't be able to gain or lose too many more positions by uh, dropping out at this point. 
Well, that uh, dashes the Canadian hopes. Uh, we're gone. Yes, we are. That's it. <laughs> that, yeah, we ran, that was our last quarter, kids, and uh, we ran out of chances. <laughs> so Scott Goodyear, John Jones, and Ludwig Heimrath Jr. all go the way of attrition here in the 89 edition of the Molson Indy. We are now shifting our sights away from John Jones to the leader, Michael Andretti of Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Hey, let's go for Michael. Let's go for Michael today. Lap number 97. <laughs> MO 4.46 back. Look out. It's getting finer and finer. It's it is now. He's starting to close in again. He's got the hook sunk and set, and now he's going to try and crank the reel and pull in Michael Andretti. He's going to have to hurry, you got to think. It's lap 97. They only go 103, so if Emo is going to make some sort of a move, he's got to be pushing it towards the front of his plate, you got to think. Well, he almost obviously can be a lot more aggressive at this point. Uh, he might catch him, but uh, getting around another guy might late in the fun. race, sometimes the cars get a lot wider later in the race than they do early in the race. Our pride <laughs> made. <laughs> yeah, it can take two or three laps to set a guy up to get a pass, and we've only got a half a dozen laps left in the 1989 Molson Inn. Let's not ignore our bridesmaid, Danny Sullivan. He's still certainly within striking distance, and uh, again, a beautiful shot of that Goodyear Blimp America, high in the sky, giving us some beautiful shots of this Molson Indy Cup race, and look at that. Isn't that pretty? Oh, God. 3.79 seconds is now the distance between Michael Andretti and Emerson Fittipaldi. Emerson, the wily old fox, is carving away at the innocent young child in Michael Andretti. <laughs> Here's Chris McClure with a question for Tom up top here, Chris. Well, a couple of things I wanted to point out. You know, Michael Andretti in his first pit stop had trouble in the pits, and yet he leads when his fuel holes got stuck. Emerson Fittipaldi got blocked by a tire and had to extend his pit stop. So really, from that perspective, they are playing on a level field. 3.79, the deficit. Fittipaldi's been eating away at it. We do know that he speeded up trying to catch Michael Andretti, who has been pretty steady in terms of his pace, Tom. I wonder, with about 20 laps of sus sustained pressing, if the tires might be just about gone away for Emerson Fittipaldi, if he's used them up even before he came to terms with Michael. Wow. Well, that's always a possibility, but Goodyear makes us, uh, because they're the only manufacturer in the in Indy cars right now, they build a pretty reliable, safe, and consistent tire, so it's not like some forms of racing where the tires can go off if you abuse them just a little bit. Uh, here, they're, they're a little more consistent, so, uh, you know, where it could be a factor, Emo's using the car up a lot harder. He's a lot more aggressive at this point, and uh, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. 3.7 seconds now separate Michael Andretti in car number six at the front of the pack and Emerson Fittipaldi, who is chasing. Michael's average speed is now 104.69, while Emos is up a bit, 104.95. Fittipaldi's average speed, 99 laps in. They're working number 100, then, I would assume, if this, if I'm reading this lap time correctly. Let us not hit for the washroom at this point. We're looking at Michael Andretti leading. We're looking at Emerson Fittipaldi. Michael in number six. Emerson, number 23.7 seconds back. There's Michael down the front straight. There's M.O. at the start finish line. This could be a wild finish as yet. Danny Sullivan, not that far back. 2.41 seconds is the gap. Ah, Fittipaldi's average speed up to 105.09. He's going faster. He's leaning into it here, Tom. Leaning into it now a little bit. 100 laps are in the book for oh. Andretti Fittipaldi. Pop-off valves Three are going. Three to go and 2.41 seconds to make up. Then you gotta get by him. Well, you see, uh, Michael's coming up on Fabby, the fourth place uh -huh. runner the leaders are coming up on. Traffic could be a factor here. Okay. Who knows what drama may yet develop in the Molson Indy 1989. It's not over by a long shot. Here's Michael now, coming up on Teo. The number eight Porsche lets him by. Yes. No trouble there. No Michael problem. flies through. Now, will he let Emo by? Yes, yes, he does. And Emo right up now on Andretti. This is going to be a finish, ladies and gentlemen. Here no, they come. Come away. Oh, this is something else. I tell you, we'll have the crowd on their feet for this one, Tom. I think it's going to be a knockout here. No question, Jeff. Two laps to go. The separation is 95 hundredths of a second. Is this Emo going to get him? This is going to be him? a race. Is Emo going to get him? There's your leaders on the back straightaway. 
This is what makes IndyCar racing so popular throughout Look, the country. Emerson, Emerson, inside. Finipaldi, inside they touch. Oh, he bobbles. And Finipaldi is off. Oh, he's gone. Oh, Lake Shore oh. straight away. Emo's gone on the exit Michael road. Andretti continued on and continues to lead. Finipaldi trying to get straightened out so he can go. Finipaldi taking the inside line at the end of the Lakeshore straightaway. The two cars touched. Finipaldi went off. Emo. Fittipaldi yeah. continues in second position. Danny Sullivan, who's in third, is a lap down from Fittipaldi and Andretti, but Michael Andretti, provided no damage was done that would cause him to stop, Michael Andretti is on his own. Emerson Fittipaldi on a silver platter, Tom, just gave it to Michael Andretti. Well, I'm not sure on a silver <laughs> platter, but, uh, you know, good contact. They were lucky oh. to get away with that. Ammo had the yep. foresight to get the clutch in and uh, keep the engine running. We got the white flag, one lap to go. Michael Andretti less than 11 turns from winning. There's Emo, he's by for the last lap signal. And you're right, Danny Sullivan well back in third, worse than a bridesmaid this time, in fact, Jeff. It'll be Here Michael comes the Andretti replay on the Diamond there Vision, if replay. you can see a screen where you are in a, an executive. Oh, there top. we go. Oh, he banged Pretty him aside. Pretty good contact down there. Uh, Emo tried on the inside. He must have had a little more horsepower down the back straightaway. Got a run on him, got the draft, got inside of him, and then uh, Michael sort of came play down Michael. to block his position. Michael Andretti through the twisty little parts of the course. Look out. We've got a new race Our winner at 89. Number six. A new name on the trophy at the Molson Indy. And I don't think we can blame Michael for that bump, Tom. Oh, uh, no, he's nope. just protecting his part of the racetrack. That's his to, to work on, and uh, he did a good job protecting it. Here he comes. Here he oh! comes. The Andretti's finally win in Southern Ontario. And Michael Andretti <laughs> finally wins our race. The 1989 Toronto Molson Indy champion, car number six, Michael Andretti. Emerson Fittipaldi okay, comes here's... second. Emo's by Danny Sullivan's got to get back here. He's through and fine for the checkers for third overall. For the first time, Danny Sullivan's not second. <laughs> he would rather have changed the number three position for number one, of course. Uh, my hopes were up for Danny this year, who's always been second here, Tom. But uh, kind of nice to have that new name in Michael. And I think you'd agree, due for the win, needed a victory in 89. It'll boost his confidence. It might make Mario feel better today as well. Well, it's got to help Mario uh, a little bit, but it was a great job by Michael. Did a fine job. Uh, Emo gave him a run for it late, uh, but it wasn't to be, and uh, the fans got their money's worth today. Oh, no question. <laughs> we thought it would be different. We thought it would be exciting, Jeff. That's exactly what it turned out to be in 1989. You had to know we were going to have a horse race here today, and you had Top to know Sabre. that Emerson Fittipaldi would be the one who provided the competition. Tom, there we are. Final standings, my friend. You get to run it down. Well, Michael Andretti, number one. Emerson Fittipaldi, Danny Sullivan, even after a bad pit stop, maintains that third spot. Fabian the Porsche and Rick Mears, uh, not the best day, but still a top five finish for that Penske team. Our final standings for the most of Indy. Look at this, the hand for Michael when it comes into the victory circle. And, the and team. for Michael Andretti's crew, pit stops played an important role today. Here's the replay one more time, Tom. Yeah. The bump, bang. Again, good contact. They were lucky they didn't do any more damage because it moved the cars around quite a bit. Uh, Ammo had to lock up the brakes, and uh, it was a pretty good shunt, but they both got away with it. Wise of Ammo to just head straight for the runoff road. He might have uh, tried to correct it, but no, he went straight off. Yeah, he knew he wasn't going to be able to make the corner, so yeah. he tried to keep her out of trouble, and, uh, you know, he did, and he salvaged uh, <laughs> a second-place finish with it. They're rigging a towel out over the back of Michael Andretti's neck, trying to cool him off a little bit. It's been a long, hot afternoon and a lot of great IndyCar action again. This has been quite a season for the big PPG IndyCars. Tom Stava, bless you for joining us in our broadcast crew here at the Molson Indy in 1989. Uh, sorry about John. Uh, well, no that, good luck today. That's part of a development program, and we'll have that STP Buick back at the Michigan in a couple weeks. and. Uh, and Try to hope to learn some more and make it a little stronger down the road. You betcha. A very special man in the form of Tom Steva joining us for the race commentary at the Molson Indy to hail another new name on that award platform. Thank you, Tom. He'll want to head for the winner's circle as well. And uh, provided us with some marvelous uh, color commentary, of course, to assist us in presenting you this electrifying program. A good Ooh. event. Emo had to have his go at him. There was no question. And, uh, he certainly did. I mean, we saw the times 
the separation time between Michael Andretti and Emerson Fittipaldi was trimmed. It was about nine seconds initially when Michael Andretti took over the lead after Bobby Rahal dropped out. And then Fittipaldi managed to carve that down to four. Then it went to five and change. And then he had it down to four again in three. And then that lap, as you saw, a couple of times on a replay and, of course, once live on Diamond Vision and on screens around. Emmo trying on the inside to get the line at the end of the Lakeshore straightaway. Side by side they were, and they bumped. And, of and course Emmo the touched the wall. And Michael was on his own. Yep, another bump story hits the headlines for 1989. A lot of you, uh, yeah, I hope you hang around, kind of watch the victory ceremonies, which are upcoming within a moment or so here on the Molson Indy Network. Uh, might be nice to uh, see your champions out there uh, on the giant screen or your local screens or along the front straight here. Uh, try to hang in for that if you can. It's going to take you a little while to get out of exhibition place. I know you'll uh, try to navigate that as safely and as carefully as you can. Thank you. What a joy having you with us here in 1989. That wraps up the 80s, in fact, with no two-time winner on record in the 80s of this most looked like event. it for a while a couple of times today didn't we had little al al answer jr who won last year he led for quite some time then we had bobby ray hall the winner of the inaugural molson indy he was leading for a long time but michael andretti was due was overdue i think today at the racetrack Horton safety unit bringing the John Andretti STP car number nine in the long pit row as Tom leaves us. Uh, his hopes were up for the STP crowd today. They did not have the success or marginal success they'd hoped for. We gave you the top five Michael Andretti, Emerson Fittipaldi, Danny Sullivan, Teo Fabi, Rick Mears. Beyond that, uh, you may find this uh, lineup of interest, uh, and we should perhaps run down this, Jeff, at least to about the top 16. Scott Pruitt finished sixth today in well car done, number Scott. three. Raul Boisel, the Domino's Pizza Hot One, car number 30 with a seventh place finish. Fabrizio Barbaza, we have him position number eight. Well and done, Fabrizio. Yeah, that team, I think, are quite happy today. Their best finish of the year. Kevin Kogan, thanks again for lunch. Nice lunch, Kev. Finishes in ninth position. Dominic Dobson, year. tenth. Bernard Jourdain, eleventh. Steve Celine, twelfth. Jan Bikus, 13th, Scott Brayton, 14th, Randy Lewis, 15th, Derek Daly, 16th. The Canadians today. Oh, God. Tough luck day for Canadian yeah. entries. Ludwig Heimrath, the word we had, the engine fried on Ludwig today. That's happened to him before. Scott Goodyear had fuel problems out on the track. Tough luck for Scott Goodyear. And John Jones making contact, losing the right portion of his front wing, damaging the rear spoiler as well John Jones tried to keep going he was in and out of the pits a couple of times they tried this they tried that and they couldn't keep it going for John Jones and that's how the Canadians fared in the 89 <laughs> Molson Indy well that's all right we're going to get him in the 90s I tell you we got some young people that are coming on some development going on in this nation that uh, is going to march on into uh, this form of uh, cart IndyCar championship racing and they're going to become a factor the day has to come uh, Jeff and uh, it's already happening in some of the uh, support events uh, as was evidenced uh, here this weekend uh, Paul Tracy did look good there's no question in the ARS run uh, okay lost out there in fact uh, most of the front runners in that series lost out in that race today that'll be a startler as far as the final results are concerned all new names pretty well the uh, Corvette challenge going uh, Canadian for uh, Peter Lockhart and of course our players GM series that had to be Canadian uh, all the entries were from our country so we kind of sold that one up on the weekend but uh, uh, the cart indie teams success. the cart indie players and the drivers in cart are tough people to compete against and uh, and to be able I think to sit in a car and drive with these fellows for uh, 80 some laps John Jones put in how many laps today. 90 laps, I think. 90 plus before he had to call it a day. John Jones is an up and comer. John Jones is doing well. No question. So, Scott, Gideon, here we are. Emerson Fittipaldi's uh, number 20. Quickest horse of the weekend in terms of uh, yep. qualifying time. Yesterday, he finishes the race with an average speed of 105.60 miles an hour. We no, that's the do. best speed. The average speed, 90.75. I think we should have that car bronzed. He uh, has a, a record for the Molson Indy that. You know they may not top next year, but then oh, we don't know. You think that? <laughs> we almost. The Penske PC18 is quite a machine. It's a great piece of machinery. Overdue, Eric Thomas at the uh, awards platform. Eric, your turn. 
Thank you, Jim Paulson. Ladies and gentlemen, I think you'd have to agree, as we mentioned at the start, the best ever Molson Indy. Year number four turns out to be the best Molson Indy on the streets of Toronto. Let us welcome to our victory podium the president of Molson Breweries of Canada, Mr. John Carroll. My pleasure on behalf of Molson Breweries to, on behalf of all the Molson Brewers and the, the other sponsors, to thank you, the fans of Toronto, for making this such a great day. This is record attendance. We had some record speeds today, and we owe it all to you and to the volunteers and the great people that have done it, but mainly to the teams and the drivers themselves that make this such an exciting spectacle. And here are three of the very best in the world behind me right here today. We're also hopeful that we can bring you the Molson Vancouver Indy next year. We look forward to seeing you then as well as here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. It's now time for the trophy presentations and personal congratulations. Mr. Carroll will make those presentations as well. Our third place finisher, he has finished second three years in a row and in year four, he is our third place runner from Louisville, Kentucky. In the Miller High Life Penske PC-18 Chevrolet, Danny Sullivan. Thank you very much. It's great to be back. I hope we put on another good show for you. We've been second here three times. I wanted to go to first, but we'll take the third. Good to be back on the podium. Thank you. Finishing in the runner-up spot. Placing second, and what a weekend he had, shattering our Molson Indy record, not once, not twice, but three times. Former two-time world driving champion, the winner of the 87 Molson Indy, Emerson Fittipaldi. Well, you know, I'm very pleased with my second place, and Michael just apologized to me, and uh, he, he hasn't seen me that, and things like that happen in the race. Congratulations, Michael, and congratulations, Danny. Thank you. Well, I know a lot of people before this race began were talking about the awful rash of bad luck that this young man has been having. But he finally came through, he never quit. He's led most of the races on the calendar so far. The winner of the 89 Molson Indy to better his third place finish last year from Nazareth, Pennsylvania, Michael Andretti. Thank you very much. Oh, it, was a, it was a tough race. Uh, Emerson made it, you know, very close right to the end. I feel very bad about it with Emerson. Uh, Coming down the straightaway, I thought I had a lot more than I did. And uh, when I looked in my mirror, he was about a, a little speck in my mirror. Next thing you know, he was inside of me. So I feel, uh, feel very bad. And uh, I owe Emerson one, so sorry. But uh, anyway, the Kmart Havlin team, they really stuck in there the whole race. Uh, we got behind the eight ball with the first pit stop, but uh, we all hung in there. And uh, finally, the brakes went our way. So this makes up for the, the whole year that uh, all the other brakes that we had. So. Anyway, thanks a lot, Toronto and uh, Molson, and hope to be back next year. How about another round of applause one more time for Emmo, Danny, and Michael. What a fabulous show they put on here this weekend at the Molson Indy. Thank you to all the car drivers and their families of the Molson Indy on behalf of the entire crew. Thank you, one and all, the fans and why don't we do this again next year? We'll see you in 1990. Take care. Thank you.
Well, there's your champion, a new name and a different name one more time to wrap up the 80s in Molson Indy history. Michael Andretti, we somehow knew in the 80s the Andretti name had to be there. He does it before the era ends. What will happen in the 90s? And they are not that far away, my friends. And you can bet that uh, about the time you're arriving home in the GO train or TTC, and we trust that's how you came today, we will already be in the midst of plans for another marvelous show to welcome the new era. It's uh, the famed uh, Kart Indy Molson Indy Championship hat dance happening over there at the awards platform right now. And I think uh, they run about seven, eight different uh, changes. Uh, so you'll still have a good golden opportunity to keep a close eye on these champions while they honor each and every one of the major supporters of uh, their form of racing throughout not only North America, but the awesome plans that are being made right now by the cart uh, IndyCar crowd to make this uh, truly international. There are thoughts of uh, having this show appear in um, other parts of the world as well as Canada and the United States. And uh, we'll certainly have word on that. Your champion, the pilot of number six, Michael Andretti, 26 years of age out of Nazareth, Pennsylvania. And this crowd have yet to move to their home track. Next, it'll be the Big Oval. That could be Rick Mears' country. But for the 1989 Molson Indy, it is a Michael Andretti day. Total time, 7,260.91 minutes, if you want to scribble all that down. 103 lap total, of course. Average speed of 90.90 miles an hour. Best speed. But a 104.69, so certainly not the hottest lap going to Michael today. The Okay, a little spray of the champagne. Who are all these folks with the open mouths that are <laughs> sort of hanging around the award platform? What a great golden way to get refreshed. And I guess the X should be mentioned here as well. M.O. totally soaked, yeah, but he's not going to forget the caps and the uh, flowers, so uh, he will latch out of those and certainly will not leave the park without them. Let's have a look again as you wend your way out of Exhibition Place in our Molson Indy at the final standings. Michael Andretti, the champ, in number six. Right on him, number 20, Emerson Fittipaldi. A lot of damaged equipment being hauled in now uh, from the uh, track area as we look at these final standings. Third overall, finally gets a third this year. He's not doing better. He slipped off a pace. Number one, Danny Sullivan. Then number eight, Teo Fabi. Nice finish for Teo. And number four, Rick Mears.